incarceration uh, of an individual prisoner. But you just say child killers can't go to these places. And who would argue against that? Mm. If you've killed a child, you can't go to a healing lodge. You can't go to these alternative prisons. You stay in a regular prison with bars and fences and razor wire and stay the hell away from general society. So then where would this uh, this decision obviously originates with Corrections Canada? It, 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 it has turned into uh, not just a small uh, storm uh, in, in the House of Commons. Uh, it occupied uh, most of yesterday's session as the questions flew back and forth, the accusations flew back and forth. Where do you see this finishing up? I see this finishing up with the Prime Minister digging in his heels. Um, look, previous Liberal governments were faced with this. In fifth, there was a guy named Clinton Suzak who murdered a police officer execution style in Sudbury, Ontario, about 25 years ago. Uh, in 2001, it was discovered uh, and reported by The Sun that he was living at a prison on Vancouver Island that was dubbed Club Fed, one of these places with the golf courses and everything. Mm. It outraged people because of the heinous crime he committed. Uh, the Liberals uh, dodged and weaved for a couple of days, and then Lawrence McCauley, who was then the public safety minister, he's now still in Justin Trudeau's cabinet as the agriculture minister, stood up and said, we've moved him. They have the power to do it. Justin Trudeau doesn't want to do it. And he forced his MPs to stand up and vote against a motion that didn't denounce the government, but said this decision's wrong and needs to be fixed. As Andrew Scheer rightly keeps saying, when elected officials make mistakes, it's up to the government, the elected officials, to fix it. Yeah. Justin Trudeau is trying to make this about whether or not you trust public servants to never make a mistake. Look, I live in Ottawa, and I don't want to compare the, the murder of a child to people not getting paid, but I live in Ottawa, where there are literally tens of thousands of public servants, and a lot of them aren't getting paid properly. Why? Because of the Phoenix pay system, because they know one of their colleagues made mistakes in implementing this. Public servants know that they're not infallible. They're not the Pope here. Uh, so why the prime minister's doing this i don't know but he is infuriating an awful lot of canadians including people that support him otherwise no kidding uh just very quickly you got about 15 seconds here does this become an election issue next year uh, if he doesn't fix it yeah we've also got uh, uh news about the the killer in calgary that killed five uh, young people at a house party getting special treatment in jail, Elizabeth Wetlawfer, the serial killer nurse, getting special treatment. More of these are going to come out, and the government's response will determine whether this is an election issue. You can find him on iHeartRadio at 580 CFRA. Brian Lilly, Beyond the News, uh, go to iHeartRadio, check him out. Uh, also writes a phenomenally well-written blog that he posts uh, uh, online as well. Brian Lilly, always appreciate to wrapping up our week with him. My name is Renee Wasilik, and I'm the CEO of Troika Development. Green Square Vert is now over 80% sold, with eight open floor plans to choose from located in Lower Mission. Green Square Vert is literally in the heart of the Lower Mission. One and a half blocks to Rotary Beach, two blocks to H2O. Our buyers are saying, I can't believe the value. With contemporary condos and urban townhomes starting at 274.9, these homes won't last long. Visit live at vert.ca. The Outlander PHEV lets you save more when you fill up less. With its electric drive, you'll enjoy a quiet, smooth ride on top of big savings on gas. Make no compromise with the versatility of an SUV and the performance of super all-wheel control. The Outlander PHEV starts from just $42,998 MSRP and fees. Plus, get $2,500 off with a provincial government rebate. Conditions apply. The best people and the best bad cars. Valley Mitsubishi. See Valley Mitsubishi for details. Win or lose, touchdown or turnover, JDS Energy and Mining is proud to support local sports in Kelowna. They believe it's important to put youth at play where they can learn to be leaders. They believe in the habits and values learned from working in a team. They believe the skills today youth learn in organized sports will strengthen our community. JDS Energy and Mining, a proud community partner of local sports in Kelowna and your Okanagan son. Hey, it's Charlie from Chances. 
Did you hear? Fun Day Fridays are back. Come out and have fun. There's only one day of the week that gives you the most fun, and that's Fun Day Fridays with bingo from 9.30 till 11. Trust me, this ain't your grandma's bingo. It's edgy. It's crazy. It's out of control. It's Fun Day Fridays at Chances, and it's back. So see for yourself. Must be 19 plus to play. If you gamble, use your game sense. Heart on fire. Ooh, wee, that sounds exciting. A heart on fire? What does that even mean? Translation, the world's most beautiful, brilliant, and perfectly cut diamonds. Hearts on fire. Yep, you guessed it. CJX now has the world's most perfectly cut diamonds. Bam. CJX on Tut and Kalo. The Grandmaster DJ in the Sky has a new BFF. I am your host reminding you that there is no God and that is okay. Get into CTV's God Friended Me, where a non-believer what? could become a true believer. God sent your friend suggestion for me? And with a little help from above. I don't know who's behind this, but why they chose me. He's transforming lives. Hey! I think you just saved my life. One click at a time. I feel like I'm making a difference. God Friended Me, streaming tonight at 8 on CTV. They say good things come to those who wait. At Mitsubishi Motors, we believe better things come to those who don't. So hurry to our 2018 model year clear out event today and get incredible offers such as 0% financing for up to 84 months on select vehicles. With advanced safety features, fuel economy, and available super all wheel control, all backed with our 10 year powertrain limited warranty, you'll see why impatience can be a virtue too. And why now is the best time to get a Mitsubishi vehicle. Conditions apply. See Valley Mitsubishi for details. Rona is a proud sponsor of your Okanagan Sun and a strong community supporter. They're ready to help you tackle every project you've got. Think Rona for every job, from renovating the house to upgrading the bathroom. Whether it's a huge undertaking or just a small fix-up, they have the product, the prices, and the expertise you need to get the job done right. Visit Rona.ca and tackle every project with Rona. Doing it right. 1711 Springfield Road. Proud sponsor of your Okanagan Sun. If it's time for a new ride, your timing is perfect. The selection has never been better at Kelowna Auction World. Come turn on the car you really want. Ready to, ready to get in gear, the super sale is here. Enjoy low, low pricing on a huge selection of pre-owned vehicles on the auction block and ready to drive home. Auction starts this Saturday at 10 a.m. at Kelowna Auction World, Highway 97 North. Get in gear, the super sale is here. Win or lose, touchdown or turnover, JDS Energy and Mining is proud to support local sports in Kelowna. They believe it's important to put youth at play where they can learn to be leaders. They believe in the habits and values learned from working in a team. They believe the skills today youth learn in organized sports will strengthen our community. JDS Energy and Mining, a proud community partner of local sports in Kelowna and your Okanagan son. Madison Avenue Group invites you to invest in your future now. Enjoy family living at the Orchard in the Mission. Enjoy gorgeous views of Lake Okanagan, the mountains and surrounding meadows, with schools, parks, activities, and more, all within walking distance. This is your chance to build in Kelowna's lower mission. Find a home that suits your lifestyle with Madison's unique model choices and start your next chapter today. For more information and to make your home site registration, visit liveorchard.ca. Playtime Casino Kelowna invites you to the Thanksgiving Buffet today from 4 to 8 p.m. Encore Rewards members pay $18 or $20 regular price. Seniors get a 25% discount. Plus, for the month of October, when you buy one buffet, you get the second free. No coupon required. All slot machines in the Express Bar are open Wednesday to Sunday from noon to 2 a.m. Must be 19 plus to play. If you gamble, use your game sense. Get behind the wheel at Orchard Ford. Orchard Ford is the top-rated dealership in all of BC for customer satisfaction. They're family-owned, family-run, and have been a family values dealership for over 35 years. By looking after their customers, they've grown to be the number one new vehicle dealership in all of BC. Orchard Ford also offers BC's biggest inventory. A big thank you to all of their customers. Orchard Ford, a proud supporter of the Okanagan Sun. Online, orchardford.com. Pacific Pilsner.
Well, let's just break that down. Pacific, as in the Pacific Ocean, and Pilsner, as in a pale lager. A perfect combination. Some things like beer and sun, water and good weather, fishing and friends were meant to be together. Other things such as two left feet, rap and rock, socks and sandals, well, not so much. Pacific Pilsner, brewed with all-natural BC spring water, true north style, anchored at your local BC liquor store. Okanagan Sun Football on AM 1150. Jock Tire Carson Park here at the Apple Bowl. Another exciting BC FL football game here with your Okanagan Sun. Started yesterday in first place. Now they're in third place. Carson, big games yesterday. Yeah, crowded, uh, crowded lot of games yesterday. Well, not crowded, but good for the VCFC anyway in terms of focus. Gaming implications, but the anthem's starting up right now, so we're going to cut quick the commercial and come back. And we're going to go to a real quick commercial while well, the old Canada is played. Bronag Contracting gives back to our community. For the past nine years, they've been a proud corporate sponsor of the Okanagan Sun. They're also proud to support the Okanagan Charity Classic Golf Tournament with proceeds to the Canucks Autism Network for Kids, as well as helping underprivileged kids play organized sports. Bronag specializes in commercial construction as a general contractor and project manager. If you need their expertise, get in touch. Bronag Contracting, a proud supporter of the Okanagan Sun. Honey? Yes, dear. Did you see all the big colorful ads at the airport? Yep. Patterson Outdoor does them. They also do the ads in the bus shelters and on the benches, plus all the billboards we keep passing. Wow, they are everywhere. I think I have an idea to help our business grow. Patterson Outdoor is everywhere. Visit PattersonOutdoor.com and find out why. Patterson Outdoor, supporting our community and proud sponsor of the Okanagan Sun. Go, 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 go. Win or lose, touchdown or turnover. JDS Energy and Mining is proud to support local sports in Kelowna. They believe it's important to put youth at play where they can learn to be leaders. They believe in the habits and values learned from working in a team. They believe the skills today youth learn in organized sports will strengthen our community. JDS Energy and Mining, a proud community partner of local sports in Kelowna and your Okanagan son. Under the helmet and between the 50. This is your all-access pass to Okanagan Sun Football on AM 1150. Chuck Tire, Carson Park back here at the Apple Bowl. We're still ready for kickoff, but before we uh, go to kickoff, Carson, we were just talking about the fact that the very big rock jam at the top of the standings in yeah. the BC Conference. Yeah, yesterday everyone came into the day with uh, five wins, the top four teams with five wins, and the... Uh, Rebels really fighting to keep their playoff hopes alive with only the three wins. Rebels, unfortunately, lost the VI Huskers. So that loss for them and the win for, uh, not VI, the Valley Huskers, the Chilliwack Huskers, Chilliwack Valley. Um, they lost uh, in the shootout 52-38. to 38. It was quite entertaining to follow along online there with uh, the big special teams plays for the Valley Huskers. Um, but yeah, that's really locked in the playoff standings. So the, the playoff teams this year are going to be Okanagan Sun. The Langley Rams, the Valley Huskers, and the VI Raiders, who, again, all came into the day with five wins. Uh, the Huskers came away with a win, and the Langley Rams defeated VI. So with six wins apiece, uh, Valley Huskers and VI are leading the division at the moment at 6-3. and three. And then your son at 5-2-1 and one can jump back up to first place with a win here today. Or the Broncos can play spoiler for their situation and keep them uh, buried in third instead of jumping up to first. So the 0-8 Broncos here in Kelowna, it's uh, actually a beautiful day, a little bit of rain, the field's a little bit wet on this natural turf, and uh, one of the few natural turfs left here in the uh, in football. The uh, looks like the Broncos have lost the toss, or elected, I didn't see it, if they've elected to kick it off, but they're going to be kicking off your Okanagan Sun and kick off in just a couple seconds. Not quite telling who's back there to return for the Sun, it looks like a pair of twelve. Speaking to uh, Coach Ben McCauley just before the game, and he said the flu has gone through the team, and uh, so your players, uh, normal, 
60. You're looking on his son at 35. He's going out to the sidelines. He's brought back to about the 32-yard line. I believe that was 21, Brandon Ahanza. That was Ahanza with that one. About a... okay, so your Okanagan son are going to start with the ball. It looks like they're going to spot on the 34-yard line. The way he followed his blockers on that play was very, just used his blockers so well, setting everyone up properly, found a lane to the uh, sidelines. He could have had a little bit more wheels, a little bit more juice to the sidelines. Might have been able to break that for a big game. Um, Pocket, he's uh, in the I formation, shotgun. Down about the Sun 38-yard line. Right in about four or five there. Oh, that's Malcolm Mitchell in the backfield. Getting some running back reps today. He's an exciting guy to watch with the ball in his hands. Normally plays receiver and returns kicks once in a while. All right, so second down. Second down and five for your son at their own 39-yard line. Again, an eye formation. Three receivers uh, in motion. And again, a handoff right up the middle. He's crossed the 40, crossed the 45. He's at the 50. He's at the center stripe. He's into Bronco. Oh, the bounds. See where they marked that one. They're marking that at about the Broncos' 47-yard line. Oh, that was. With another carry, another big run there for him. He, uh... He's played some running back before, but elected to move over to a receiver this year, hoping to get a little bit more reps in the offense with the uh, strong backfield the Sun already have. And uh, great to see him getting some running back carries today. I know he's a big fan of just having the ball in his hands, looking for things to do. Again, the I formation, Miller in the backfield. They're loading up the receivers on the strong. Threatening. Baylor rolls out to the side. He's going to pass downfield. He's but he's caught it. It's a the first cast into. The, I can't see it. It looks like he, they mark. Sorry, or three thirteen or thirteen ten remaining in the first quarter. Baylor back. This time he's got to split, uh, split the receiving core up a little bit. And right up, he's a crier. He's breaking off you. Two or three yard carries, turning them into 10, 15 yard runs, right up, right up by just breaking tackles in the middle of the field, finding his way to the sidelines, just turning into a race out of bounds. So they're using those sidelines pretty effectively today. Early in the game, but uh, they just seem to be going right to those sidelines. Not a lot up the middle. Again, Miller in the back. Oh, there's simple eye. Receiver's in motion, and the handoff. It's a low snap. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. That looks like about all he's going to get. Taking us to a second and ten. Yeah, Miller really got corralled at those right now. Don't let him beat you outside. Don't let him beat you inside. Just hold him there until the uh, wave appears. The wave is what hits him. So 12-12 remaining on the clock. It's scoreless so far. Your Okanagan center threatening, though, at the 15-yard line, second and 10. He's back to the pass. And open right on the goal line. Did they single the touchdown? No, that's uh, Keon Ashani with the catch right down at the one-yard line. It is going to be a first down, though, so it's going to be a, a first and goal from the one for the Sun. I'd like to see Ashani involved in this offense. He's got some great hands on him. You know, Ashani did play the first few games of the season, then he's come in, and he has uh, made his presence known. And... Looks like where I got. They're loading up the middle with. Oh, Feel it's going to be them crossing them five yards here. They're going to bring it back five yards, so it's now going to be first and six. 
sorry, but he's actually first and goal from the six-yard line. And the play is blown in. It gives him a little more room to work. Ah, uh, yeah, in the CFL game, though, you don't really need that extra room with how big these end zones are. Or pretty much your whole passing offense is the four-yard line. All right, we're looking. We're seeing that same eye. Miller in the backfield, and he's going to the pass. Short pass to the goal. And, and uh, and then the other uh, backfield judge was saying. So second and goal from the six-yard line, no score. It's just uh, 10.43 remaining on the clock in the first quarter. Again, the I formation. He's loaded up the strong side, the left side, with four receivers. They're in motion. He's going back to pass, looking downfield, cut across, and it's caught, and he drops the ball as he crosses the line, and they call it a touchdown. They're saying that uh, David Cakley there crossing the goal line. They're saying that he did cross the goal line before he fumbled. It wouldn't have mattered as the Shani falls on the fumble, so it would have been some touchdown either way. But here we're starting the day off with the uh, Okanagan Sun touchdown, up 6 nothing. We're going to go for a very quick commercial break. Hello, Kelowna. I'm Bill Slaney from the award-winning Kids Center at the Big White Ski Resort. I'm approaching my 20th season working with a team of dedicated professionals who are focused on teaching kids to ski and snowboard. I take enormous pride in employing some of the very best instructors in the world, and I've been around long enough to see both former students and past instructors returning with their children to keep our tradition of excellence alive. So this year, when purchasing your big white early bird season passes, grab a handful of 50% off lesson tickets. It'll be a pleasure for my big white team to give your kids the gift of skiing. We'll sweep a chair off for you. You've got the game on, you're hungry for the next big play, but your stomach has other ideas. Hit your hunger hard with Papa John's. Head over to PapaJohns.ca to see their full roster. If the Suns score 30 or more, the next day you can get 50% off any pizza when you use the promo code GOSUNGO. Try Papa's Ultimate Meats Pizza or delicious garlic knots and head straight for the touchdown. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Proud sponsor of the Okanagan Sun. Orchard Plaza, the perfect fit for you. Fall is in the air in Napa Plaza. Orchard Plaza, it's a season to love. Harvest time, hiking time, hot chocolate and coffee time. Shop at Orchard Plaza for cozy knits. Get back to working out or make it a day with a night at the movie. It's fall at Orchard Plaza on Cooper Road. Orchard Plaza, the perfect fit for you. Orchard Plaza, Orchard Plaza, the perfect fit for you. You're listening to Okanagan Sun Football on AM 1150. I'm hearing there for a split second. Carson Park, Jock Tire, back here at the Apple Bowl. Your Okanagan Sun have taken a 7-0 lead with 10-18 remaining on the clock in the first quarter. Isaac Wagner just kicked the ball downfield with a short run back. That sees the Broncos starting their drive from their own 27-yard line. Yeah, not a bad return there for Andrew uh, Pockernick, but nothing to really return it to against that sun coverage unit. Back to pass, the Broncos quarterback, Reed Van Kugnit. He gets about a, uh, looks like their market is a 10-yard. Didn't see it. There's down. I think that was uh, Tim Solipa. Tough name here. Yeah. So, so the Broncos starting from their own 40-yard line, trailing 7 nothing to your Okanagan Sun. Van Kugnet back in a uh, pistol, handoff, run up the middle. He's gained three, he's gained five. Great one. Really cool. The one from the uh, year and struggles with having the... Uh, Zero on the win column. It's been the run game and not being able to provide any support to the rest of the team. Four formation with uh, number seven, Pokornik, in the backfield, and he receives the ball, hands off. He gets a jump. Uh, looks like a first down. See where they mark that ball. It looks like it might be about six inches shy of that. First. Real close. I think. 
I think they're going to be an inch or two short. They're just marking an inch or two short and uh, not even bringing the chains out to confirm. So that was so back uh, to quarterback Sarnick, sneak here. Sarnick with about a four-yard gain. So it's a third and inches, and quarterback keeps it. He definitely got across as long as he did drop the ball. And he does. They're moving the chain. That's about a two-yard gain for Reed Van Kuknick of the Broncos. And that, that's something that the uh, Broncos really struggled with this game. Three, three plays, three runs, and getting the first down out of it. Often they run the ball and they wind up, find themselves second. And he makes it a four-yard gain. See where they move that ball to. Three-yard gain. They're going to mark us at uh, second and nine and a half. Now the Broncos are really just looking at sound at least heavy to do play offense. Shotgun formation. He's rolling out to the right-hand side. It definitely looked like uh, one of their men was running offside. I think that was White. Matthew White was offside on that one. I think there might have been O-lineman early movement, too, on that. I'm not sure if there was miscommunication in the offense, but it did look like two-thirds of the offense thought it was on uh, two, and a bit few guys thought it was on one. Well, the defense, oh, wow. They didn't let that. Uh, yeah, must have so been some confusion Broncos. between the refs. One ref sees the O line or the receiver go early, and another ref is correcting him to say that no, uh, he was drawn off by the defense. Again, a pistol formation with the Sarnik in the backfield. He's going back to pass. Oh, a man down. He's laying on the field, and he tries to catch that ball for the Broncos. That was White again. He was down on his back trying to make that catch. So a third and four brings out the, the punting unit with your 17 remaining on the clock in this first quarter. Yeah, it looks like it was just the case of that damn field. Didn't quite take enough steps there in his break on that uh, quick hook play and lost an edge on his turnaround, fell over, and got his hands on the ball anyway, but just couldn't quite reel it in. Landon Monk for the uh, Broncos uh, in the back back of his own 40-yard line this punt. They've used uh, several kickers this season, and uh, Monk is out on the field today. So good snap and a lot of rush. It's only about a 40-yard kick, and he's bobbled, but he's picked up. He gains about five. He's up around his own 27-yard line. That's Miller again on the Malcolm return. Malcolm Miller with that on the return, about a five-yard run back. So your Okanagan Sun are going to start their uh, set of downs at the 27-yard line in their own territory, leading this game 7 nothing with 6.45 left on the clock in the first quarter. It's going to be interesting to see how they lean on the run games more, especially if uh, oh, Miller's jogging off the field, see who's in the backfield for them this drive. Head coach Ben McCauley uh, was indicating they're going to see a lot of new faces. Blue was going to. And with playoff numbers secured, I'm sure they're more concerned about getting into the playoffs healthy than they are uh, winning this game. And there's the handoff. He broke down the right side of the field. Oh, wow. Five. He's gained 10. He's at his own 40 yard line. That is, that is Kelton Curry joining the game at running back. Sun starters had itself a pretty pretty solid season all, all things around. Out of the backfield running the ball. Elton Curry uh, with that run, he was the uh, offensive player of the week in the BCFL. He's had put some pretty good numbers up recently. Matthew Mailer in as the quarterback in the pistol formation. With Curry in the backfield and his pass, he flips it off. Down the sideline, we've got a flag already on the play. He flips it off David Aitley, who gets across the large old line of scrimmage and maybe gains about four. Great run there by Cakely. They're going to call an offensive hold. And if it is on number 50, I'm going to be forced to disagree a little bit. I think Cakely just set up a great block from him. But it looked to me like that was the block the official was looking at when he threw his flag. So we're going to have to see. But it may it easily have been somebody else. Most running plays the hold somewhere. 
So they're going to accept the penalty, move it back 10 yards, so it'll be a first down, repeat of down. Oh, they are giving that to number 50. So first down and 20 for your son, standing on their own 30-yard line. Matthew Mailer back to the pocket. He's back to pass, looking downfield to his left. Whoa! Big hit there. That's number one, Michael Bear laying the lumber on the sun receiver who's reaching up for a high ball there for Baylor. Baylor puts that up and uh, puts his, uh, his man in jeopardy when he's that high in the air trying to catch a ball. Yeah. Makes him exposed a little bit, but uh, he was right down in the first down territory. So it's second and 20 for your son with a 7 nothing lead over the Broncos right now. Pistol formation. Looking down to his left again. To keep this up. Trying to join the jump ball, he might have been able to uh, inch his way to the back of that pile and caught the ball at the back end for a big gain. But Isaac Wagner standing in his own 16-yard line and snaps up, and he's very short kick, almost an onside kick. Bang, so just out of bounds at the center field stripe. He was. I'm not sure what really happened. Like that. that's really uncharacteristic of Isaac Wagner. Just from the look and sound of it, I think it just went off the side of his foot. And uh, I'm not sure if it's a bad drop or just rushed his cadence a little bit, but definitely not one of the better kicks we've seen this season. So 4.56 remaining on the clock here in the first quarter. The Sun are leading 7 nothing over the Broncos, but the Broncos are starting in really good field position on their own 54. Broncos coming out. Pistol. They love the pistol and the ace pack all game. Looking down the left-hand side as the completed pass, about an eight-yard gain. Ty Kitzman tackling the receiver pretty hard there into uh, linebacker uh, Cody Thompson. Now White making it second and three. Good catch there in the, in the tough traffic, taking a hit from either side. Again, back in a pistol formation. Who's at the backfield this time? Someone different. It looks like Trent Price in the backfield this time. To fake the handoff. He rolls out to his left-hand side. He's quarterback's going downfield. He's got the first down. He's runs out of bounds. Into well into Sun territory. It looks like they're going to move the chain. He's 41. Yep. They're having a couple of successful runs earlier. Able to roll with that play action. Got a couple more yards on the ground out of their quarterback, which... Again, like we were saying, is something they've struggled with this year. So establishing that early is really going to help them stay competitive later in this game. Duck on formation. They got a split back here. Hand off. Zebra crosses the 40, gets into the 39 yard line. Flag on the flag play. on the play. That was Trent Price with about a three yard run. See what the flag is. I'm thinking it might be a hole, but. Not seeing a signal from anybody yet. Not seeing yet. any signals and no movement of the teams here on the field. Looks like the rain stopped here. Oh. Horse collar tactile. Calling the sun on the horse collar uh, on that. Because that's the day and the three, three, three fifty remaining. On the clock in this first quarter. Bronco was looking for a running back. They have yeah, an one of them the men on the field. On the field, one of the men's run off. There we go. Shotgun formation. Nobody in the backfield. He's going back. Rolls out to his right to pass. He's under pressure, but he's got a man open down the sideline. Great ball there. Wow, that's uh, Tim Salipa, number 18 on the reception. They're right into Sun territory now, and they uh, marking that on the ninth. will be a first and goal for the Broncos. Really threatening the Sun defense here, which has been very, very strong all season. And Canloops hasn't hasn't really been that strong this year. So seeing 
seeing uh, David kind of march on Goliath a little bit. Well, I think what you're seeing is a well-practiced, well-worked team with the Broncos and uh, some under underutilized Sun players out there today. Maybe not quite as comfortable as they need to be in their position. And it's a pistol formation. He thinks, rolls out to those sidelines. He's under a lot of pressure, and he uh, throws it out of bounds. There's a ton of pressure with three suns in his face. I don't think that was supposed to be a fake. I think that was supposed to be a run play, and I think there was a miscommunication between himself and the running back on which side he was going to hand it off to. Van at the quarterback for the uh, Broncos, running over to the sidelines, see if he can hear the message. Second and, second and goal from the nine, from the eight. Sam Luke's in with an empty backfield. Oh, number seven going over to join. That's uh, Andrew Pocanick. Cernick. I Cernic, believe. Uh, I'm bullish. Back to pass. Oh, the quarterback is taken down really hard and is deflected. We got two great plays there in the end zone. I was uh, looking for Tim Salipa again. Of course, bullish. <laughs> the quarterback gets hammered just as he releases the ball. Yeah, that sun pass rush. It's really missing uh, Nick Daly, but there's a lot of guys in that sun front seven who can find their way to the quarterback real quick. And when you can do that, it makes, makes the defensive backfield a much easier position to play with long hanging balls needing to sail in the air for uh, receivers. Turns what should be open plays into jump balls. So it looks like Bryce Couture is going to be kicking this 16-yard uh, field goal attempt. It's down. And it's up. And today they signal that's awesome. So it makes it with 225. Three for your Okanagan Sun. Let's take a very quick commercial break. Your chance to build in Kelowna's most desired area starts now with Madison Avenue Group. The Orchard and the Mission provides and builds on a one-of-a-kind location in the heart of Kelowna's lower mission. Lake views, mountains and meadows, all conveniently located close to parks, schools and more. Madison's unique model home choices mean you can start your next chapter today. Home site reservations are being accepted now. For more information and to register, visit liveorchard.ca. From our team to yours, this is Okanagan Sun Football on AM 1150. Double bowl jogger. The uh, Broncos are about to kick off after their 16-yard field goal, trailing 7-3 to to your Okanagan Sun. The kick is up, and it is picked up at the 20-yard line. He's at the 25. He's at the 30. He's crossed the 30. He's being brought down around. Who's that in the... Carson, did you see the number? I Again, cannot, on the I cannot give a number there. That is, is that number 10, Connor Richard? It might have been. It looks sort of like it's the number 10. It is. That's number 10, Connor Richard. So your Okanagan Sun leading 7 to 3 at 219 left on the clock in the first quarter and at their own 32 yard line. I, I believe Richard actually set a uh, BCFC uh, career record the other day with blocked field, uh, blocked punts, blocked kicks. I missed that game. I was, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, away with the curling event. I, I just saw a stat going around the internet the other day. He's at eight. For wow. his Ridiculous. Matthew Mailer back in a pistol formation in the backfield. And it's a fake handoff. He's rolling. He's scrambling out of his pocket. And oh. he's thrown out of bounds. That was a late hit on Matthew Mailer, son quarterback. That looked like a really late hit, but no flag on the play. He's lucky that was not... An interception over to uh, number 30, uh, Dylan Young for the Broncos, who was rallying to get back to the receiver that Mahler was just trying to throw the ball somewhere near. And Mahler overthrew the receiver and almost almost hit the linebacker there rallying in the uh, coverage. I'm also not sure that was supposed to be a uh, fake. I think he's supposed to hand that ball off, too, and just turned into a frantic play. Is that Hanson in the backfield this time? Again, that's a pistol. No, everyone's moving forward. He's back past. He's going down the right side. Almost intercepted. And there's Dylan Young again with his hands on the ball that time against Drake. Almost comes out with an interception. It looks like both uh, the receiver and the defender uh, had equal opportunity. Bring it to a third and ten. Your Okanagan Sun two and out again. Leading this game 7-3 with just 153 remaining in the first quarter. Isaac Wagner back, hoping to get away a better punt than the last one, which is only about 25 yards. 
Yeah, the last one, I think, went off the outside of his foot off his drop. Hopefully he gets a better, better hold on this kick. A good tap, and the kick is away. Not a great-looking kick. It's about 40 yards, big bounce there. It's picked up at the 45. He's crossed the 50. He's in around the 54-yard line of Bronco territory, but there is a flag on the play in the backfield. A yeah, flag thrown again in the general direction of uh, Dylan Young, number 30 for the Broncos, who's been all over the field this last four or five minutes. Um, so I'm thinking somebody may have clipped him in the back. So a 10-yard penalty against the Broncos. Although I'm not sure what exactly the penalty was. I think it was blocking from behind. It was, it was a block in the back, just not on who I expected it to be. So with 136 left, the Broncos start with the ball on their own 43-yard line. And Price is back there. Split back. Price back there. Oh, the snap is really low. It's in the dirt. Quarterback's holding on to it. He runs up the line. Skippers finds a man to open at midfield. He's crossed the 50, crossed the 45. He's brought down in Sun Territory around the 41-yard line. As Tim Salipa, again, number 18, been the primary target here today for these Kamloops Broncos, making a bunch of catches. Oh, he's getting chubbed up, players. though. Yeah, he's got, I think he uh, winded himself a little bit. Your son with one minute left, leading seven to three, but the Broncos are threatening at Sun the forty-one yard line. He's loaded up the left hand side in the pistol formation. He's faking back to pass. He passes out to the side, number eighty eight, got the ball across the forty, down brought down around the thirty four yard line of the sun. As Ian Fistad on the catch. Quick catch and run. Basically a, a great extension of a run game. Looks like he's hurt himself a little bit. He's uh, jogging off the field. They break huddle. Van Kugnet, again in a pistol formation. This time he's got Pernick, Andrew Pernick in the backfield. He hands off to Pernick, who goes up the middle. There's a hole up the middle. He crosses the 30 into about the 28. Runs far enough for a first down there. Far enough for a first down. They're going to move those chains with your son. No time left in the first quarter, and uh, it is blown. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back for the start of the second quarter with your son leading 7-3. to three. From the back door comes a tale. The story of Backdoor Winery in Summerland is one of trials, tribulations, and one particularly larcenous crow that still makes her presence known in the vineyard to this day. But it's also the story of triumph over adversity and of distinct wines that are not without a story or two of their own. So heed the calling of the crow. Visit Backdoor Winery today, just off Highway 97 in Summerland and at backdoorwinery.com. This is Okanagan Sun Football. Hear it, live it on EM 1150. Chuck Tire, Carson Park back here with the, at the Apple Bowl. Start of the second quarter. Your Okanagan Sun are leading the Kamloops Broncos 7-3. to three. But the Broncos are threatening. They're at the Sun. Where are they marking? It looks like they're going to mark it right around the 28-yard line for the first and 10. Yeah, the Sun defense really needs to find a way to stop this uh, Broncos rush game to give themselves an easier time on these second downs. Reed Van Kudnick back with no one in the backfield, and he hands off right up the middle. number 25. He crosses into about the 23-yard line. Yeah, late, late comers into the backfield Trent there. Price. From, uh, Trent Price comes sideways and, gets, and receives that. And uh, we also had uh, Andrew uh, Posternick join the other side due to lead block for him entering the backfield late. So one thing about the Canadian game is you're never quite sure what the formation is till the snap of the ball. Second and five again. It's a pistol formation. Now we've got to switch up. He's beside him. He's rolled back to pass. He's rolled out to his left hand side. He's put it up in the air, and it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown Broncos! What a catch there. That's uh, Darian Pritchard, number 19, coming out of the slot. He's the man who replaced uh, Tim Salipa. So. Still looking like they're looking the same position and two great playmakers making plays to Kamloops here today. The uh, the Sun defense really needs to be able to keep those guys in check going forward or this is going to be a good game for Kamloops. 
Kamloops is looking really comfortable on the field out there. And uh, yeah, this does not look like an 0 8 team at all today. They're they're comfortably bringing this this Sun team, this uh, number one rank or number one going into this weekend ranked Sun team. So they're going back. Uh, they've lined it up for that extra point, and the snap is good, and it's up. And the Broncos take a 10 to 7 lead with 14 16 left on the clock in the second quarter. Let's go for a quick commercial break. Win or lose, touchdown or turnover. JDS Energy and Mining is proud to support local sports in Kelowna. They believe it's important to put youth at play where they can learn to be leaders. They believe in the habits and values learned from working in a team. They believe the skills today youth learn in organized sports will strengthen our community. JDS Energy and Mining, a proud community partner of local sports in Kelowna and your Okanagan Sun. You're listening to Okanagan Sun Football on AM 1150. Dr. Tyler Carson Park back here at the Apple Bowl. The quarterback, Van Kuknick and Darian Pritchard have uh, put this Broncos, 0-8 Broncos, out in front of your 5-2-1 and Okanagan Sun, and they've just kicked off. They've picked it up around their 20, 25. He's crossed the 30, crossed the 35. He's dropped down around the 42-yard line. There was a huge hit there on that kick return. Trying to catch a number on who laid the lumber there. I think it was Okanagan Sun number 29, uh, Brendan Ripko, who's been a bit of a special team uh, special team specialist here lately with a, a big fumble recovery uh, last week. But big pop there in the middle of the field for the returner to run by. 14.07 left on the clock in the first quarter. Your son are trailing 10 to 7, but they start with the ball on their own 44-yard line, first and 10. Pistol formation. Matthew Mailer is in uh, for quarterback today. He's back. He hands off. Goes up the middle. Gets about a four-yard gain. Was that uh, I the back I think that's Miller again. Malcolm Miller again with the ball. Yeah, ex- exciting uh, jump cuts all over the place whenever he's in the game. Right there, he pressured the middle hole, then jump cut around to the edge so that he could uh, get around the edge and gain four yards, but there's probably only one or two. Second and six. Receivers, yeah, receivers switching are sides. switching sides right now. Miller in the backfield. Pistol, three receivers in motion. He's going back to pass. He's looking down to his left. He lets it go over the head of the intended receiver. That's the uh, second and third time he's shown it high to Keon Ashani, who just can't quite reel in the catch. So, two and out again for the Sun. A smart safety for these Broncos is going to start lurking just a little bit behind some of these routes for those high passes that don't quite connect and find themselves an easy interception. Miller's, um, uh, Miller's really got to find a way to get the ball down, lead his receivers, hit them in the uh, head to hips area. Isaac Wagner for your Okanagan Sun back standing in his own 35 is a high snap. He's got went away as a beauty this time. It's caught at about the 30 yard line. He's going backwards. He's out breaking out to the side and he's brought down hard at the 32. That was big tackle there. Siklovsky with the run back about a three yard gain, but taken down at the knees. Huge, huge tackle there. That's uh, Aiden Sent. Siklovsky. That was number 42 with the tackle, wasn't it? Oh, it was. My apologies. Sorry. So the Broncos leading this game 10-7 over your Okanagan Sun with 12.53 remaining in the second quarter. They're going to start with the ball on their own 32-yard line, first and 10. Reed Van Kuvnick, quarterback. He's got two receivers. He's got split backs right now. He goes back. As I drops the ball. He's scrambling in the pocket. He's under a ton of pressure. He basically just throws it away down the sideline. I thought that was going to be a sack for sure. Yeah, good heads-up play there by the quarterback. Almost could have connected with the receiver there for a second who kind of skated in behind the Okanagan Suns secondary. But slight miscommunication on where the receiver thought he was going to go with that ball where it went with it, so it just falls harmlessly into the grass. But broken play almost turns out well for the Broncos. Second and 10, the Broncos leading your son 10-7 here in the second quarter at their own 32-yard line. Again, split. He's got one uh, running back. No, he's come up to block. He's gone back to pass, looking down the right side of the field. Intercepted. No. 
Oh my goodness, that was a clear interception. Ty Kitzman is was one of the league leaders in interceptions a year ago. It's just not not gotten the luck and not quite gotten the handles this year that he had last year. And he drops another easy pick that almost could have been to the house and he uh, only would have had one man to beat, I think. He cuts right in front of the intended receiver and absolutely just drops the ball. It's right in the chest. So Landon Monk for the Broncos back, standing on his own 17-yard line to punt. It's third and 10. And there's always a lot of pressure from this uh, specialty team uh, for the Sun. And they are rushing the kicker hard and almost oh. blocked. He gets it away. It bounces at the midfield stripe. It's picked up at the Sun 50. And he is brought down almost immediately. But he is set on his feet. He is fighting. Number 81, I believe. That's uh, Blaze Boschman. Haven't seen that name yet come up on the score sheet. Blaze Boschman. So he gets no run back on that one. It's a bad bounce, but he, uh, the Suns start with their own 51-yard line, trailing 10 to 7 with 11:43 left here in the first half. Austin Daisy came up hot right up the middle and almost got a block there. And that was the, like I was saying earlier. Richard has eight in his career, five this season. The Suns this season have 11 blocked kicks, which is just ridiculous. Team averaging more than one a game. Malcolm Miller in the backfield. Matthew Mailer for playing out Caden. Receiver's in motion. He hands it off to Miller, who goes right up the middle. Oh, he's and popped hard, and the ball is, pops loose. He is pinballed is very hard there up the middle. Comes, he goes down. What are they indicating? The, uh, they're saying it's the second down. Yep, they're marking it uh, that he recovered the ball after he fell, and he's staying in the game, so he was hit hard, but not that hard. So it's going to be a four-yard gain, second and six for your Okanagan Sun, just shy of the midfield stripe on their own 54. Yeah, the first guy popped him real good, and as he kind of bounced off that contact, he fell into another hard, hard tackle that popped the ball loose. Colton Curry in the backfield. He's moved up to come beside the block. He's rolling out to the right-hand side. Baylor goes right up the middle, keeps the ball himself. He's brought down. It looks about a nine-yard are about uh, a yard short. We're going to see where they mark that ball. It's all about the marking now. Yes, he's going to be short. So it's going to be a third down and two for your Okanagan son. Yeah, I think he thought he had more open field than he did. He pumps pretty hard at what he thought was an open man, pulled it down. I think he saw the field open up a little bit and uh, just thought there was more of a hole there than there was. Or maybe he thought the first down stick was closer than it was. He certainly looked like he thought he had that first down. Isaac Wagner back at his own 45. Snaps good. And it's up as a beautiful kick. Gets it off to the side. It bounces at the 15. It's rolling in around the five-yard line. He has a, And no yard is called, but he's brought down instantly at his own seven-yard line. Let's see where they mark that ball and move the, uh, That's the a penalty. Frustrating penalty there. There's no need for any Sun player to be within that five-yard window. They should all know better to stay a good six, seven yards away, and then collapse on him as soon as he touches it. And the Especially when they could have dropped the ball in the corner there. I mean, there was inside the to go. 10. They easily could have had this ball inside the 10, and now they're going to get marched out at least a few yards outside the 10. And uh, so a few major lines over there, the 10-yard line, the 25-yard line. If you start on either side of that line, that dramatically impacts what you can do with the drive. So the Broncos leading this game 10-7 to with 9.46 remaining in the first half. Start with the ball on their own 13-yard line. Yeah, it plays the difference between having your running back on the goal line or on the five. Van Kuknick hands off. He runs right up the middle. He's brought down about the 16-yard line. I believe that's, that's uh, 23, Samuel Hill. They're going to give him about a four-yard gain on that one, second and six. Yes, yeah, so that's just a much uh, much tougher, riskier play. You can be a little bit more aggressive on defense if you have that extra five yards close to the goal line, and that's just a frustrating penalty to cost them. All right, the pistol formation. It looks like Price in the backfield. He rolls out to his left to pass. He throws it to an open man. He's got the first down. He's got five five extra yards. That's Tim Salipa again. Favorite target today. They're moving the chains. 
Yeah, he's, he's been uh, he's had great sure hands all day today, and that's one thing that the first two times these two teams met, that's something the Kamloops, Kamloops receiving core really struggled with. I just remember seeing must have been ten or ten or eleven passes bounced off receivers that were catchable balls, and when that happens, you just can't may, remain competitive. First and ten from their own twenty-eight. He rolls back. He hands it off. That's number twenty-three running up the middle, about a five-yard gain. Sam Hill with another good run. Sam Hill gains five, making it a second and five. I'm not sure what's going on here today with the Sun Front Seven just allowing a, a pretty solid running performance here from Kamloops. They've got to be able to get a little tougher here in the trenches and slow this down if they want to get this game back under control. No one in the backfield. Back pass rolled out to his right this time. He's scrambling out. He's almost at the sideline, and he throws it. And are they marking that as a completed pass? Yes, they are. And that should be a first down and as well. That is a first down at their own 40. Tim Salipa again on the sideline. With the Broncos leading the Sun 10-7, to there's 8.05 remaining in the first quarter. It's a first and 10, so the chains have been moved, and the Broncos are on the march again, starting at their own 40-yard line. In pistol, Trent though. Price, the pistol formation. He's back and a fake handoff, pass right up the middle. About a seven yard gain there. Eight yard gain. Well designed play. They've had great success running the ball on first down. So they do their quick play action to pull a linebacker up and then throw the quick slant right behind the linebacker for a strong eight, nine yard play. That's Matthew White with that reception. Again, the I formation pistol. Then Kugnet takes the snap, going back to pass again, looking down the right side. He's got a man open who crosses the center field stripe and gets pushed out of, down, out of bounds for first down. That's Matthew White again. Oh, Matthew White having himself a bad time over there on the sideline. Now in the Sun territory at the Sun 54-yard line, already leading 10-7 to here with 6.57 left in the first. Van Kugnick in the eye formation. He goes back to pass. He's looking down to the right. He holds on to the ball. He's got the room, and he drops very smart. He was about to get tackled. He gets about a five-yard gain. Yeah, there's a, a smart way to get down, down there for a quarterback. He tried to lower the boom. He probably would have only gained maybe a yard. It would have been hit hard by at least two, maybe three Sun defenders. We talked about that smart quarterback, you know, when they tuck that ball in and, uh, you know, you get what you can get without getting hurt. Yeah, you want to. seems to be uh, working the field pretty well that way. Yeah, you want to be able to uh, get every yard that you can, but you want to be avoiding any unnecessary hits because those might in impact a later pass you have to make later in the game. Taking an extra shot to the throwing arm. Sornick in the backfield, scrambling out to the left, short pass to Sornick. And he's dropped about five yards short of the original line of scrimmage. So it's going to be a third and nine. Good coverage there by the Sun defense, seeing the running back swinging out wide and getting over and covering him real quick. We have a Sun taking a knee right now, but I think he might be just doing his laces. Yeah, I think, I think he's the shoe repair. So the Landon Monk, the, uh, the punter, standing back on his own 41-yard line. Blaze Boschman back to return again. Is that Blaise, Boschman, Blaise, that's Boschman the lone again. returner, standing at his own 10-yard line. Oh. The Sun always looks like they're going to bring it on the punter. They put so much pressure. They, they're just no, no blocking intended. They just want to block that kick. And the snap is really high. And there is four sun on top. The kicker is a very short kick. And the bounce is around the 27, 30, sorry, around the 37-yard line. And gets, and gets a cover there by Cody Thompson, smartly taking the no yards. And he got it. He receives the ball at 32 with the no yards. It should be moved up around the 37 or 38-yard line. Yeah, the sun really, really brought the heat there. And are pretty fortunate that they did not get a roughing the kicker penalty or any other subsequent similar penalties. So 
with exactly five minutes left in the first half. Your son are trailing 10 to 7, but they're taking over on their own 37 yard line. See if they can move the ball. Yeah, the Sun offense really needs to get something going here. Be something of a strange event for the Sun to go into halftime down to this Kamloops Broncos team. Again, pistol formation. We got all kinds of receivers moving around, and it's a handoff to Malcolm Miller right up the middle, about a three yard run, and that's all. Now, Miller or Curry? That was in the not. Backfield. That was Bolton Curry. They both got the eight in the back. Yeah. 18 and 38. They have a similar running style. That too. Miller is, I think, a little bit more of a shifty guy with not quite as much weight behind him, but. Yeah, Curry loves to be a shifty as well with those jump cuts every time they come to a tackler. Second and seven for your Okanagan Sun on their own 40-yard line. Matthew Mailer back in the eye formation. Four receivers down the left side. Short pass, screen pass out to Curry. On the, he's down the sideline, and he gets it knocked out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. Very close to the first down mark. And they mark it right on the first down. Marking it right on the stick, it looks like. So and they're going to move the chain. down. So that's a first down. It's a From here, I thought he kind of squeaked down the sidelines an extra four or five yards even, but I guess they must have stepped right on the light. And so they're marking the ball on the uh, 30, sorry, the 48-yard line. You're Okanagan side in their own territory trailing 10-7 to 7 with just under four minutes left in the first half. Mailer back to pass, and it's going to put it to handoff right up the middle again with Curry gaining about two. Hard run, just plowing into the defenders, hoping to just drive the pile forward, only gets two yards out of the play. Bolton Curry uh, putting a lot of work in there, but not only gaining two, two yards. Second and eight for your son, trailing 10 to seven. Matthew Mailer is your quarterback today. Again, the I formation. He's loaded up the left-hand side, the strong side. He's back to pass, looking down to his left short screen pass, right up the middle, and he's got his first down and a couple more. Javen Cately. Great pass in the crossing pattern, running that quick uh, drag or five yard in. The first read in the bottom of the uh, bottom of that levels play. So the chains are moved, and they're into Broncos territory, trailing 10 to 7, but they're at the Bronco 50 yard line now, with 253 remaining in the half. We got a whistle. The officials are going over to. Uh, I've got a three minute warning. Three minute warning. I really like that play design by the Sun, where they load up the one strong side of the field, and they have the weak side slot drag across, while the uh, strong side slot drag over the top, giving the uh, quarterback two or three levels to read through. So if that bottom level gets covered up like a blanket, there should be a guy in over behind those behind those players in the same field of vision. It's just right there for you to pass it to. All right, we're in a pistol formation. And they're in motion. Here we go. And it's a handoff right up the middle again. About a 40 yard gain. Bolton Curry. He's going to be battered and bruised going into half time. Yeah, if he keeps having runs like this, where it's just he's running hard right into that first wave of defenders, right at the D line. and kind of getting trapped up in there, just falling forward into the second layer of tacklers who are pretty regularly hitting him on his way down. It can't be a, can't be a fun time. Not a whole lot of big holes to on offense. Right second now. and six trailing and the seven, but they're on the 47 yard line of the Kamloops Broncos. I sorry, pistol formation out and a flag and a whistle blown immediately. That would uh, indicate procedure offside by the uh, offense. Oh, Five-yard penalty. Marshall Klein with the early movement again. So that's going to bring the ball back to uh, a five-yard loss. It'll be second and 12 for your son. Again, trailing 10-7, to 7, 216 just left on the clock at, in this first half. I think the official may have spotted them a yard here. I think they did. I think there was an extra and yard loss. holding them on it, but uh, all right. See, here we are. I think that stick is on the 52 and the ball's on the 51. All right, everyone's in motion now. And the ball is snapped low, and he kicks it. Baylor kicks it away from his own hand, and he drops about a... Back. Oh. 
in the dirt between his feet and can't quite get the handle, just falls on it instead. So what looked promising with a uh, couple first downs turns into a third and 20. So Isaac Wagner standing back on his own 36-yard uh, line. He's going to have to punt third and 20. Staff is up. It's low. Staff issues, but a beautiful punt down the side. It looks like it's about the 15-yard line. It bounces, and then it bounces out of bounds. That was definitely Wagner's kick of the day. That was a that beautiful was a punt. beautiful kick. Nice high spiral. Lands it inside the 20. They're marking it at the 13-yard line. What a beautiful kick for Isaac Wegner. He is by far one of the most valuable players that this Okanagan son have, and he was special teams player of the week for the BCFL. Yeah, he's, uh, he's just got a strong leg on him, especially in the punt game. And this Okanagan Sun team that's so much about winning the special teams battles and just grinding out defensive wins really, really benefits from having a leg like that able to flip the old on people get them back deep in their own end when really they most other teams would have this out on the 20 or the 30 somewhere. So in the backfield, you've got uh, Kosternik. And we, do we have a timeout here? I think they did call a timeout. It looks like a timeout being called. I'm not sure which side, but uh, Vancouver, the quarterback for the Broncos. I think the Sun may have called that. I'm not sure, though. I, I think the uh, are looking at the clock thinking, They've got, they're threatening. Yeah, they got, they got the field position at the moment. Try to get their quick three and out and get the ball back with some time on the clock, hopefully. 159 remaining, and your son are trailing 10 to 7, but they've got the Broncos end in their own end with a first down and 10 from their own 13 yard line. The Water Boys are out on the field right now. Number nine is running in. Van Koopen at the quarterback is running back in with obviously the play from the bench. Here we go. Get the uh, just given the uh, history of the BCFC and and how strong the Sun team is, it would be incredible for the Kamloops to beat this the Sun team, and they are leading approaching halftime. So Okanagan really has to find a way to make a big play here before half. Sornick in the backfield, snap back, is handed off to Sornick. He bobbles the ball a little bit. I think he lost his focus, maybe gained a yard or two. He brings that ball up. They're going to mark that at the 15-yard uh, line. So it'll be a second and eight. Second and eight for the Broncos. But they're leading this game 10-7 to seven with just 155 remaining in the first half. And the clock is ticking, so we'll snap this ball somewhere with 130-something uh, left probably. You got to think into the shadow of their own goalpost. They're not really wanting to. Uh, I'd expect to run. Have an interception, so you want to see a run. Oh. They got the receivers in motion, but he is rolling out to his left to pass. He's throwing it downfield. He's look. He's got a receiver, oh. and he's at the own twenty yard line. Is where they're marking that ball. That's one thing you didn't That's want. That's Timothy Salipa. Salipa steps out of bounds as well, which should stop the clock with one thirty one left. He didn't so want to stop if, the clock, and he didn't get the first down, so it's a third and four that's a, for the Broncos. That's a huge mistake. Yeah, if, you, if you're not going to get the first down, you have to just hit the brakes before you hit the sidelines and just take a knee and bounce so you can keep that clock running. So Landon Monk for the Broncos, standing in his own five-yard line. Who's the uh, sole uh, returner that they've got? It looks like We've got a man running north. onto the field for the Broncos. It looks like they uh, have to sneak a man in, so they got the right numbers out there. I believe that's Malcolm Miller to return to the Sun. Standing at his own 45. Where's that Brendan Hansen? I'm just, uh... Okay, here we go. And the snap is up. It's high. And the punt, oh, it's just away, but the kicker is hit. We got a flag already on the play. And the ball's picked up. That looked like Connor Richard actually picking up the ball there. We got flags all over the place, and their kicker has not gotten up yet. He's taken a knee. Yeah, and so the trainer block. going out, he got hit really hard. That punt was almost blocked. That was Nicholas Cross on the uh, roughing the kicker, missing the block and running. John Richard the, <laughs> up the ball for the Sun, but I'm not. It was and Malcolm Miller flags. on the return anyway. Was that Malcolm Miller? So the 18 yeah. and the 10 look a lot alike. Especially but the there's flags the there, so that looks like no yards, but I think they're roughing the kicker penalty by quite a bit. Yeah, that's going to be first down Kamloops. 
Hopefully that kicker is all right. He did. That was he a text, still taking a knee. textbook roughing the kicker as the ball is already gone. Just full body weight running through the leg there. The outstretched leg is a, a vulnerable second for kickers. So let's take a really quick commercial break where they attend to that kicker. He's uh, the center trailing 10 to 7 with 124 left in the first half. Win or lose, touchdown or turnover. JDS Energy and Mining is proud to support local sports in Kelowna. They believe it's important to put youth at play where they can learn to be leaders. They believe in the habits and values learned from working in a team. They believe the skills today youth learn in organized sports will strengthen our community. JDS Energy and Mining, a proud community partner of local sports in Kelowna and your Okanagan son. Madison Avenue Group invites you to invest in your future now. Enjoy family living at the Orchard in the Mission. Enjoy gorgeous views of Lake Okanagan, the mountains, and surrounding meadows, with schools, parks, activities, and more, all within walking distance. This is your chance to build in Kelowna's lower mission. Find a home that suits your lifestyle with Madison's unique model choices and start your next chapter today. For more information and to make your home site registration, visit liveorchard.ca. It starts here. This is Okanagan Sun Football on AM 1150. We're back here at the Apple Bowl with your Sun trailing 10 to 7, 124 left in the first half on a really bad roughing the kicker penalty. The Broncos are taking the ball back over just when the Sun looked like they were going to have really good field position and a really good opportunity to maybe get some points on the board before the uh, before the half. Instead, the Broncos have the ball first and 10 from their own 50-yard line. Again, the Broncos are leading 10 to 7. Very unexpected, this 0 and 8 team leading the 5 2 and 1 Sun. Yeah, it's quite the uh, quite the game so far. Pistol formation. He scrambles to this right or this left. He's gone deep into his own end. He's in a lot of threat, and he's tossed out, and it's almost intercepted. Oh my goodness! He, as he's running out of bounds, he puts the ball up in the air, and Tyler going gets a hand up there and almost knocks that ball into his own arm. Yeah, I'm not sure if he was looking for Tim Salipa behind going or if he was just looking to throw it out of bounds, but he just throws it down the sidelines, and Tyler going almost gets another one-handed interception like he did last week. Just can't quite reel in the handle there. 110 left here in the first half. It's second and 10 from their own 50. He burned up a lot of clock there, running in the sideline. Yeah, that was uh, quite quite the scramble there. Van Kupnik in the I formation. Pistol, okay, and he's come back to block. And he's scrambling backwards again, and he airs it out down the sideline, out of bounds. He gets knocked down, but there is no flag on the play, so it's a two and out. Again, just sailing out there to nobody on the uh, heavy sun pressure. Again, Tyler going, getting in on the play, providing the pressure from this uh, near side. It almost looked like a broken play. It didn't, it didn't look like the there was a fell apart on him, and he was just looking, looking for a player to throw it to, and then nobody in the area, so just getting rid of it out of bounds. Again, he's got to get it further out of bounds, though, because uh, Ty Kitzman almost had a chance, almost had a play on that ball over there by the by the sideline. Good to see Nathan Monk back in, so he always not hurt too badly, standing on his own 35 in this third and 10. And let's see where the snap is. We've had some questionable snaps today. Malcolm Miller, the only returner, and it's up. Oh, and he gets hit again, and it's kicked out of bounds, but it's only kicked about 20 yards downfield. And he's not getting the flag that time. I'm not sure why he's not getting the flag. Well, I think I would have thrown it. He's not too happy about it either, I don't think. I think he did everything he could to get out of his way and block that punt, so I'm not sure that there was a little embellishment then. So with that really poor kick cut out of bounds, the Sun are actually taking the ball over on the 53-yard line of the Kamloops Broncos. And so with 58 seconds left on the clock and trailing 10-7, to 7, they have an opportunity or maybe to put some points on the board before the half. So all things said, the roughing the kicker cost them roughly 28 seconds. Again, pistol formation. You got one return or uh, one running back back. He's going looking back to pass down his left side. He's got a man open. He's got about nine yards. He's going push backwards. Doesn't look like he makes it right to the uh, first down Burton, but very close. 
Adam Burton on the reception. Second and short here. And a hurry up offense in. He's got no running back. Oh, he keeps it the keeper. There it is. And he looks yeah, like he's got far enough for the first down. Matthew Mailer keeps the ball. Yep, just fighting for that first down to move those sticks quickly. Okanagan to get set on the ball here and run the no uh, no huddle offense. Oh, they are huddling here. Clock is ticking. Malcolm Miller in the backfield. Back pass. Mailer's looking downfield. He's scrambling out to his right. He's looking downfield. He's got a man open, but throws it well short of the intended receiver. Stops the clock. Trailing 10 to 7. David Cakley there looking for uh, looking for a reception about oh, five, six yards down downfield. As the man who is covering him decides to rush the quarterback and provide pressure on Mahler and kind of left him open for an open angle there for a second. 32 seconds left on the clock. He's done trailing 10 to 7. Mailer in the backfield. He's got. Is that Malcolm Miller? Yeah. It is. And he's going up the block. He's looking back to pass. He scrambles right up the middle. He's tucked the ball down, but not well. He's across the 30, across the 25. He runs out of bounds at the 25 yard line. Great scramble there by Mailer to find his way upfield and get that first down. Huge block there by uh, Malcolm Miller coming out of the backfield, popping the, uh, popping the defensive lineman who was trying to close the pocket on Miller. On Mailer. Mailer and Miller. Mailer and Miller. So at the 26 yard line is where they mark it. 24 seconds left of the clock. Sun trailing 10 to 7 here in the first half. Miller in the backfield. Mailer, your quarterback. Pistol formation. Handoff. No, he fakes it. Rolls out to the right. He's got a man open and he underthrows him. He throws behind the intended receiver. Yeah, the Camels was playing a zone there and the receiver is starting to run into the flat zone and quarterback's just looking for him. From the once we can hit a hook position, but receiver doesn't recognize the zone and keeps running into the running into the coverage. Quarterback throws the dope and field. Do we have a timeout? It looks like timeout against uh, timeout by Kelowna. At 20 seconds left, trying to get points on the board here before half. We're within field goal range, so we're definitely Sun in Isaac should, Wanker field goal range. Sun should be able to get us to it. 10 to 9 game. Really hoping to get the lead going into half, though, with a touchdown. Isaac Wagner, I think, is long on the season is 42. I could be. I believe that it was his 42 was as long a few weeks ago, and I have not written down a number longer than that yet. So. Mailer comes in from the sideline after getting uh, some uh, coaching from the staff. Break the huddle. Let's see what formation they set up. Malcolm Miller in the backfield. Four receivers to the wide side. And the clock is ticking. Here we go. He's back to pass. He's down, looking down the left side. He's got a man open. And incomplete looking. pass in the end zone. Intended receiver there. Which, was number three. I'm sorry. That's uh, Zyla. That's Keith Zyla. Keith Zyla. We haven't said his name in a while. He usually, Keith Zyla was quarterback for uh, game uh, three and game four for your son. He's been setting up on the defense. This time he's setting up as a receiver. Yeah, he's gotten a little bit of work everywhere this year. But he's just uh, a good athlete, good smart football player, who kind of can do that sort of thing for you. So Isaac Wagner out sec with a third and ten. He's going to go out for a still goal attempt from his own, or from the 33-yard line. He's set up on the left hash mark. Snap is good. Hunt is up. It's not very long. And it is wide. It is wide. He's brought it out. He's in the 10. He's in the 15. He's brought down around the 18-yard line. Oh, that's, you don't like to see that. They marked it at 22 with a Wagner little bit of just, there. Wagner just punched just, it wide right, just pushed it a little too far. And uh, I'm not sure if it was the hole there or what, but definitely did not come off his foot very clean at all. Last week, especially team player of the week, does not look well. He doesn't look comfortable with his kicking today. He's had a couple great kicks, but he's had a couple that are really, really uncharacteristic. So yeah. starting from their own 22-yard line with only nine seconds left on the clock, it looks like the Broncos are going to go into the half 
leading 10 to 7 over the Okanagan Sun. Yeah, it looks like they're setting up just like a quick knee here and get into halftime with the lead. It's 10 to 7 lead, but I can't remember the last time Canada's got a 10 7 lead going into the half against the Sun, but here we are. I don't know if they've had a lead going into the half in any of their games this season. They've uh, been outscored substantially. But this, as I was talking to their coach, good young team building for next season. Oh, it was painful to watch the first game with how many passes that the quarterback found off receivers that just left points on the board that they didn't need to leave. And when that happens, you get points put on your board that probably shouldn't be there. So the Broncos take a knee, finish out the first half with them. The Broncos, Kamloops Broncos, who are 0-8 on the seeding season, leading your Okanagan Sun, who are 5-2-1. and They're leading 10-7. to Let's go for a quick commercial break. Come meet your local farmers and crafters at the Kelowna Farmers and Crafters Market. Shop unique local vendors offering fresh produce, meats, cheeses, baked goods, crafts, and ethnic food. Visit their website or Facebook page for great contests and event information. They make it, bake it, or grow it at the freshest all-local one-stop shop, the Kelowna Farmers and Crafters Market. Every Wednesday and Saturday, rain or shine, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the corner of Dilworth and Springfield. They'll see you at the market. Orchard Plaza, the perfect fit for you. Fall is in the air and at the plaza. Orchard Plaza, it's a season to love. Harvest time, hiking time, hot chocolate and coffee time. Shop at Orchard Plaza for cozy knit. Get back to working out or make it a date with a night at the movie. It's fall at Orchard Plaza on Cooper Road. Orchard Plaza, the perfect fit for you. Orchard Plaza, Orchard Plaza, the perfect fit for you. Mr. Lube is proud to support your Okanagan son. You can rely on the Kelowna Mr. Lube team to ensure your vehicle is ready for those long road trips or just in-town driving with fluid and filter changes and so much more. Get fast, convenient oil changes, no appointment necessary, and enjoy full tire service with the same no appointment status. Plus, they're open late till 8. Take good care with Mr. Lube Kelowna. Across from Superstore, behind Scotty's, proud supporter of your Okanagan son. Exclusive insider access to the people you want to know. Dan Patrick brings you A-list guests from the world of sports and entertainment. Listen to Dan Patrick weekdays 6 to 9 p.m. on AM 1150. News, talk, sports. C-K-F-R, a Bell Media radio station. This is Kelowna's AM 1150. News, talk, sports. Okanagan Sun Football on AM 1150. This is Jock Tire back here at the Apple Bowl. We had a few minutes to uh, talk to Brad Yamoka, who is related to many of these. Brad is the Broncos, let's, uh, yeah, that's the, the trick, I think, but, uh, you know, we've got a good group of young guys, I think they want to, they want to work and improve and get better, and I mean, at the, you know, at this point from the season, obviously, this is a way of fun. Yeah, um, you know, yeah, keeping them motivated. I think they do a pretty good job themselves. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we just keep working and kind of keep constant. Uh, you know, we don't change things. Just because you know we're we're you know we're so off, we, we keep the routine the same. And, uh, I think the consistency is is helps. Uh, that you're hoping to build on for next year? Well, I mean, we got a great uh, set of running backs, uh, you know, with uh, Andrew Parker, and Ted Price, and Sam Hill. And, uh, you know, if we can keep those guys uh, uh, engaged and keep them around for a few more years, I think, uh, you know. I'm five. So, uh, you know, we got some young guys. And, you know, hopefully they'll get to see you 
conclusion of clear and medical. To add in, obviously, uh, a few more bodies. School program, do you recruit? What we can do right now? I with the chief of the funds for a huge class, and uh, we have a great relationship with CRU now, and uh, we've worked on that over the last few years. So, uh, you know, yeah, we, we can offer a lot of uh, the, you know, the, the things that a university, a uh, major university, can offer. Is, uh, we can help develop these kids that they have can have a career maybe. Mm -hmm. First half, let's go for a really quick commercial break. We'll bring you back and we'll have a little discussion with uh, head coach of your Okanagan Sun, Ben McCauley. Hi, Tony Parsons for Next Gen Hearing. Join us for the Better Hearing Expo, October 11th at the Coast Free Hotel in Golan. This free workshop will feature speakers on hearing loss and solutions, as well as prizes like premium Oticon hearing aids. Valued at five grand. Space is limited. Register at betterhearingexpo.ca or call 1-877-606-6671. Next Gen Hearing. In winter, it pays to be prepared. And at Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac Certified Service, it really pays to be prepared. Avoid the winter rush by coming in today and saving up to $20 on your tire changeover. Get your winter tires on now and save money while saving yourself a headache later. Drive into Certified Service. We're undeniably the tire destination. Visit mycertifiedservice.ca for details. Drake versus Taylor Swift, Ariana Grande versus Cardi B, Beyonce and Jay-Z versus Bruno Mars, Shawn Mendes versus Ed Sheeran, Camila Cabello versus Ed Sheeran, Camila Cabello versus Cardi B. Get into the American Music Awards with spectacular performances including Mariah Carey, Cardi B, Benny Blanco with Halsey and Khalid, Imagine Dragons, Carrie Underwood, Post Malone featuring Ty Dolla Sign, and more. Anything can happen, and anything. What a way to start the night. Probably will. Get into the American Music Awards streaming Tuesday at 8 on CTV. To find out exactly what a project costs, you need to spend a block of time together and discuss what it's going to look like. Gord Turner on why he does not do free renovation estimates. The fears that people have about renovating that it's going to cost twice as much or it's going to take twice as long, that never happens on our projects because we spend the time and put in the effort up front to make sure that everyone knows this is what your project's going to look like and this is what it's going to cost. Gord Turner Renovations. They do renovations differently. Visit GordTurner.com. Your chance to build in Kelowna's most desired area starts now with Madison Avenue Group. The Orchard and the Mission provides and builds on a one-of-a-kind location in the heart of Kelowna's lower mission. Lake views, mountains and meadows, all conveniently located close to parks, schools and more. Madison's unique model home choices mean you can start your next chapter today. Home site reservations are being accepted now. For more information and to register, visit liveorchard.ca. Under the helmet and between the 50. This is your all access pass to Okanagan Sun Football on AM 1150. Uh -oh. Countdown? I'm not hearing anything. Chalk Tire Carson Park back here at the Apple Bowl. We're uh, seeing a spectacular event out here. With dog racing playing on, these are uh, they're doing over teeter totters. They're going over jumps. They're running through the uh, the paces. Pretty incredible to watch. But Carson, we had a pretty interesting first half. Your uh, league leading Okanagan Sun are trailing ten to seven against the Broncos, who are zero and eight on the season. Uh, what are the stats looking like coming out of that first half? Yeah, the uh, well one. Wasn't as much as I expected it to be, but the um, Broncos are able to put the ball on the ground and get some positive yardage out of it, which is something they struggled with most of the year. They only got 48 yards that first half, which wasn't as many as I thought they had. Sun got 101 yards rushing, um, receiving the, where the Broncos really have been quite, doing quite well all year is in the passing game. They got 125 yards 
uh, passing, and well, the Suns 61. Where that's really where the Sun really need to find a way to pick it up, get their passing game going, and uh, get some yards going. Try to get some more points under the board. The net offense, pretty low net offense game, strong defensive game here. Broncos only 172 yards. The Okanagan Sun 156. Um, again, quarterback. Uh, Sun quarterback only six to fifteen. Uh, Matthew Maller, Mailer struggling today, while the uh, Broncos quarterback um, Reed uh, Van Kubnick, Reed Van Kubnick has twelve for nine. And that is really where the big difference is uh, I mean, showing up on the scoreboard. The son, of, the son of fought those penalties all season long, and then you had a huge penalty with the roughing the kicker that would have been a son first down in, in, in Bronco territory. Instead, they turned the ball over uh, because of roughing the kicker. They just seem to be focusing on blocking blocking those uh, punts. Yeah, they've been doing a great job blocking those punts. And honestly, I'm surprised they haven't gotten more of those roughing the kicker penalties with just how a high risk, high reward uh, play that is. And they've just only been getting reward after reward with, with real no risk being shown to them. So having, a, having them get one of those penalties finally it was probably about time. They were probably due for one of those, but... It is uh, disappointing for the, that Okanagan Sun team, and it probably cost them three points anyway, if not more. If you look at the stats on the penalties, and uh, with over a thousand yards in penalties, I mean that's that's incredible. Uh, with the Rebels at eleven hundred, but the Broncos are only seven hundred and forty-four. So they and you got to keep in mind that the the Rebels have eleven hundred, but I believe the Rebels also got penalized for a fight on the field a couple weeks ago. So. Uh, they're, they're, they're 100 yards ahead of the sun, but I'm pretty sure that that 100 yard gap can be taken into account for that one that one game or that one, one 10 minute window where they just got out of hand. So the sun really have had a, a rough season of just being very penalized team. And that is, it comes a little bit with trying to be that that aggressive, high flying, aggressive team that they are. But you can't be taking those penalties even if you are going to going for that aggressive get after the ball defense. Um, it's just not something that the Sun team can continue to do if they want to continue to win in the playoffs. I see Isaac Wagner out practicing right now during halftime. He's got the ball set up for a field goal from the 35-yard line, and then he's got uh, Connor Richard uh, running them back out. So I'm not sure if this is practice for Wagner after missing that field goal from 33. I think it is. He's uh, almost in the same spot he missed that field goal from. I think he's just trying to get that confidence back out. Feel the ball punch off his foot properly. You've got Tyler going out there receiving and running it back, and you've got uh, Connor Richard, and there, he's just picked two beautiful field goals from 35. I think he just needs to make himself feel better. He did not have a characteristic, what I would call a characteristic, uh, Isaac Wagner first half. So, fans, we're about two minutes away from kickoff here in the second half. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back and bring you the second half of this football game with your Okanagan Sun trailing the Kamloops Blazers 10-7. to 7. Win or lose, touchdown or turnover, JDS Energy and Mining is proud to support local sports in Kelowna. They believe it's important to put youth at play where they can learn to be leaders. They believe in the habits and values learned from working in a team. They believe the skills today youth learn in organized sports will strengthen our community. JDS Energy and Mining, a proud community partner of local sports in Kelowna and your Okanagan Sun. Simply Computing has been around for over 30 years, almost as long as the Okanagan Sun. They know a thing or two about Apple and made it their specialty. Ask about training in the comfort of your own home. Let one of Simply Computing's professionals spend an hour or more teaching you what you'd like to learn at your own pace. Check out simply.ca to book your at-home training session. Simply Computing, downtown at 1546 Pandozi, the Okanagan's Apple Specialist, and proud to support the Okanagan Sun. You're listening to Okanagan Sun Football on AM 1150. Welcome back to the Apple Bowl with your Okanagan Sun against the Hamlin Broncos. It's Jock Tire and Carson Park here. Your son are trailing 10 to 7 going here into the second half. The, the uh, Caps 
right at the midfield, uh, shaking hands and flipping coins and doing all those things that the captains need to do. I think we're going to see a spirited second half. Uh, your son, I think, uh, did look characteristic out there in the first half. Yeah, I think both teams are going to come out with quite a bit of energy. The Broncos feel like, hey, hey we're in a game that we can win here to end our season off, end our season off on a high, taking down one of the giants of the league. And the Sun are going to have to find some way to get some energy coming into the second half. But they're going to find themselves in a lot of trouble here going from the third into the fourth quarter if we can't find some points to put on the board. Your Okanagan Sun were in first place coming into this weekend. Two games have already finished up uh, yesterday with the uh, Valley Huskers defeating the Westside Rebels and the Langley Rams beating the Vancouver Island Raiders. So that makes both the Rams. They do have to win this game. And just for props. Okay. He's got the 15. He's got the 20. He's brought down. Looked like somewhere around the 23-yard line. And there was a lot of nonsense going on there on the sides of the field uh, just after that. But it doesn't look like a flag on the play. Yeah, the... Uh... Lucky they got a quick hole sold out. I think the Broncos leading 10 to 7 have to start with the ball on their own 22 yard line, first and 10. And half make some big, bigger plays, not let them the Broncos march. So we'll. He hands it off on the run. Oh. He took from the, the pile. That looked good. That was good. Good. Ray looking like he was the receiver almost. To, uh, yeah, Matt White. Trying to run down the team. Definitely looked like uh, the Sun were the receiver in that play. Yeah, so, just a deep overthrow ball. Third and five. And that brings Bryce Couture, who is now punting. It was Nathan Monk punting in the first half, and Couture was the place kicker, but uh, Monk was hit. He took a hit a couple times, actually. Eleven yard line. They are signaling a touchdown. I think this is going to be a. Uh... There's going to be a man lined up on. Um, I don't know where this. Get first down Camlin. Instead of an Okanagan Sun touchdown. Okay. Just maybe shy. I think they're going to mark it six. They're going to bring the flags high. in. They're going to bring the six no, in and measure. Right on top. Yep. Bring those chains across. So, that's enough. Uh, when they call that five yard penalty and now, uh, now pull the sticks out to measure it, see how it goes. I think they're going to have a first down here, though. 
It looks very close. The officials put the chain. He carries it out, and it looks like it's one inch short. No, nope. no, they are touching no. the ball. I. <laughs> you wonder whether you're right. I think you're bang on with those markings. It's uh, pretty incredible. That's gonna be a first down for Kamloops after that offside, where the Sun should have had a block. Down. First hit. Green pass. Oh, very close to a helmet there, but looks like about a four-yard gain. Good son of hell. Doing Veld is a five. <laughs> Back to pass, looks down to his left. He's scrambling deep into his own pocket. Throws it out in and front of the intended that. receiver. So they're going to be giving up that ball again. Third and five now. As comes the punt team. And Bryce Couture is going to try it again. But you know what? If you're a kicker against this line, you've got to be scared every time. Oh, I'd be sweating bullets every single time I came up to kick against this, against this team, especially with a lot of the snaps we've seen this season. What a good, crisp, fast snap gets you to give you as much time as possible to kick this. If uh, you get a floater or something that's going to bounce to you, then you're immediately in a lot of trouble. Is that Malcolm Miller, the lone returner? Yep. It is. Timeout called by the Sun here. Not sure what's happening. I'm not sure there. either. Looks I guess like they're just going to make sure everybody's lined up on side properly, or is that um, in the field? There's too many men on the field. I think they did. I think they had too many men on the field and avoided the penalty. They want to make. Burn a timeout. Here we go. And time is called in, 12.32 with your son trailing 10 to 7. 12.32 remaining in the third quarter. And again, it looks like they're bringing everything at the punter. Bryce Couture, snap is up and almost blocked again. Short punt, bounces the 50, picked up at the 40. He is hammered back five yards. Hammered all the way back to the 35. Great tackle there by uh, Scott Poelzer. And so there is no return on that punt. So yeah. They're marking at a 38-yard line. So your son trailing 10 to their own top of the unit. Being the first guy downfield, it's real tough to tackle those real shifty returners. Again, uh, Matthew Mailer is your quarterback today for your Okanagan son. It's a pistol formation. Got one in the backfield. High snap. Takes the handoff, throws it right up the middle, and bounces. That was the exact awesome. same play that Camelops has been running against the Okanagan team with that, that quick little play action. It's almost an RPO look, but I don't think there's ever any uh, threat of the run. I think it's just to draw the linebackers up. It went right through the hands of David Gakely and uh, almost got uh, picked off. Second and 10 for your son trailing this game 10 to 7, 12. Then it's exactly remaining in the third quarter. Again, it's the uh, formation. One running back, three receivers on the left side of the quarterback. And he's looking back to pass, goes down the left side. He's got a man open, and he bobbles it, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by the Broncos. And I can't believe that. Jonathan LaRock, number 26, I think, had that pick. Oh, no, 28 with the interception. Off of the bobble catches. Adam Burton was the one that gave that one up. Field and run. Left the ball behind. Eating. The Cowboys Broncos are on the Sun 46 yard line. He's back to the pass. Screen pass there to the side, and it's dropped as well into the hands of the intended receiver. That's uh, Darian Pritchard, I think. And he just drops it on the field. It has not been a good game. I don't think it's raining out there, but they're certainly, certainly acting like it is. 
Yeah, it was a little damp when I got to the field here today, and I haven't been able to see any rain, and it doesn't really look like it should be raining, but it might be a touch damp out there, which might be having an effect, but it shouldn't be having this much effect. Well, I was out doing the interviews before the game, and the field definitely was wet, so you got to think that leather football is uh, getting a little bit slippery. All right, we got a pistol formation. No, we do not. Everyone's going forward. He's dropping back to pass. He's going way deep back to pass. He's thrown it up. I'm not sure whether that should be a grounding. He was on his way down when he threw that ball. They're going to say that uh, Trent Price was in the area for the uh, pass. Wow, that was about a 20-yard loss if he'd been uh, taken down. But uh, they got away with one. Reed Van Kutnick got away with one, making it third and ten from the Sun 46-yard line. Very hunting. Third too bad we don't have anybody kicking field goals in this distance. So again, Bryce Couture in for the injured Landon Monk, who took a couple of hits in the first half. The Sun are bringing the house at them again. And it's a very high snap, and he's a very short kick to the sideline. Twenty-eight yard line, twenty-nine yard line. They're going to take over this seven. It's just it's going to sort of get turned around here a bit. On offense, they start moving these chains. And Mahler had uh, the one bad pick, one bad pick last week to start the game, and has really played well since then. This game, though, just hasn't been able to move the chains the way he needs to. And last drive, losing that pick on a bobbled pass doesn't help. All right, he's got three receivers. The handoff right in. Look at Get yep. that really good first run in and uh, just start grinding their way upfield. The issue has been on the second down. Do they do they try to run it and get tackled short or will they throw an incomplete? That's where they've been really running into troubles on these second second down plays. Again, Colt Curry, Curry in the backfield, the receiver. And side, he's got the first yards. He crossed the 40, moving the chains down the field. 9.46 remaining here in the third quarter. That is what we need to see from the Sun team. Just move the chains. Those strong runs up the middle really, really help. It'll be good to see if they can continue that for this uh, the rest of this drive. Curry in the backfield, just the formation. Three receivers on the right-hand side. They're moving guys around right now. And again, a handoff fake pass right up the middle. He's at the 50. He's moved up to about the 52, 53. He's still not down. And he's almost at the midfield strike. Let's see where they mark it. There was a lot of pushing yeah, and shoving. I don't, know. I don't know that his uh, knees ever touched the ground. Because was that Cakely? Yeah, it was Stephen Cakely on the uh, great hand catch over the middle. So the sun. Center almost to the midfield straight with their own 54, trailing 10 to 7, halfway through the third quarter. Matthew Mailer is your quarterback today. He's going back to pass. He looks down to the right, short screen pass. He's got the ball, only about a three yard gain. He's not down. Early whistle is too bad for the Sun. They're only going to get three or four yards, three yards out of this play, maybe. Price number 28. Price on that one. three yards. Which is what they uh, they need to be doing because of the penalties they've taken. They could have been leading on the scoreboard. Instead, they're trailing 10 to 7 with 8.08 remaining in the quarter. High formation pistol. in motion. Oh, and it's the Lamar. The right drop down and very luckily he
He's got five. He's got 10. He's got 15. He's down to the 20. That's uh, Malcolm Miller. Malcolm Miller down to the 22-yard line. I'm going to make a, take a quick opportunity to shout out to a couple people over at the Kelowna Curling Club, the Blind Curlers. We have a group of blind curlers who are avid fans of your Okanagan Sun and love to listen to the Sun game. And that's our Kelowna Blind Curlers. So a shout out to all those guys for the blind curlers at the Kelowna Curling Club. The U.S. USD football team this year has a blind long snapper. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. He does the uh, long snapping skill goal. Pistol formation, Miller in the backfield. And it's fake handoff, screen pass out to the right and dropped immediately. Oh. That was uh, David Cakley got a hand on it, but couldn't pull it in. Just exactly what we've been seeing today out of this offense, where it's just plays that should be there are just inches off of connecting properly and receivers need to be making plays just aren't quite making the plays that they need to be making and it's causing unnecessary second and longs second and shorts of becoming third downs that shouldn't be it's uh it's been a rough day for the sun offense malcolm miller in the backfield pistol formation three receivers on the strong side he fakes the hand on He's the third and ten, and Isaac Wagner coming out to try the field goal. Yeah, I'm not sure about that uh, that option there from uh, Mailer and Zyla. Just Zyla cutting before the first down six and catching a pass would have put them just in a third and six situation, which I guess is an easier field goal, but really doesn't change the situation at all, getting us to a 10-9 game if we make it. 10 10. Oh, yeah, you're right. I can't add. 32 yard attempt. Ball is up and it's wide. Again, wide right. Twice in a row. He brings it out. He's at the 10. He's at the 15. Wow. That After all that practice at halftime, he still pushes it wide right. Andrew Pekornik again brings it out. And there's no point on the board for your son. So your son trail. 10 to 7 with 420 left here in the third quarter. Let's go for a very quick commercial break. Hello, Kelowna. It's Michael J. from beautiful Big White Ski Resort. Well, you know what time of year it is. The days are getting shorter, the nights are getting longer, and it's a little frosty outside every morning. Well, that means it's time to get your early bird seasons passed to beautiful Big White Ski Resort. Our discounts are huge. You're a local, and you never need to pay full price. Go online to BigWhite.com, because that's where the savings are, and we'll see you on the mountain. Get ready for fun. From our team to yours, this is Okanagan Sun Football on AM 1150. With your Okanagan Sun trailing 10-7 to 7 here at the Apple Bowl at 348 remaining in the third quarter. They've just got one playoff for the Broncos. They... Uh, their own 20-yard line. Very quick running play. Got up to about the 23-yard line. They had a man down. Took a knee. Andrew Pesornik took a knee. He's coming off. He's walking off under his own steam. So it'll be a second and six. Couldn't tell there if he's talking to his coach on the way back or, or joined to the Sun players. I think there was a little chirping going on, but there's no flag to the play. No harm, no foul. Yeah. And you hope he, hopefully he comes back here before the game's over. 3.30 left in the third quarter. We're back in a pistol formation. No, there's no running back now, so he's going back to pass. He looks to the left, or looks to the right, and is Ooh. immediately brought down at the line of scrimmage. Jamin Pelly doing a little bit of a stack of a taunt, taunt dance there. Pelly, the largest man on the field. That'd be he number 55. Jamin Pelly. So third and nine. And Landon Monk standing on his own five yard line looking very lonely back there, right under his own goalpost to get this punch away. And he knows he's gotta be nervous now. He knows that they're coming at him. We got hard to block this. Javen Cakley set the return in this one. Sole returner. And the snap is good this time. And it's up. And Cakley's gonna pick it up at about the Centerfield stripe, and he bobbles it, and it goes out of bounds. 
took a couple, rolled weird, over him. Took a couple weird bounces and goes out of bounds almost at the midfield stripe. Let's see where they mark that. He's lucky it didn't bounce off and then go back into uh, Bronco's hand there. A weird bounce and roll. So they marked it on the Sun 53-yard line with the Sun trailing 10 to 7, 232 left here in the third quarter, first and 10. It's on the right side hash mark. Matthew Mailer is your quarterback today. Pistol full. We go up, up through the middle. He's got about five yard gain. Good hard running there. Gain probably a good two or three yards after first contact, trying to run through that first layer of defenders. Game second and five. first down, even though it's second. There we go. Now the, officials there, you know, the officials got that. Is that Colton Curry in the backfield? Looks like it is. And everyone's in motion. Here we go. And a handoff. And he trips over his own feet, gets back to the original line of scrimmage, or back to the scrimmage, and maybe one more. That's a disappointing way to get the third four. down. Just, it looked like he just stuffed his toe on the way across. Yeah, lost his footing in his dough for as much as he could get and maybe got six inches out of the play. So Third and four, we're going to punt. Got to pin the Broncos deep once again. See what excitement can come out of this special teams play. Gabriel Sikowski, the lone returner, standing on his own 10-yard line. A low snap, and he gets it away. It's off to the left-hand side of the field, heading out of bounds. And it bounces out of bounds at the 16-yard line for the Broncos. What a pretty kick that was, considering how close it was to getting blocked. Often those come out tumbling in over end. And nice high kick, nice tight spiral. Didn't quite get the distance you'd like, but got it inside the 20, and that's all you could ask. So just under a minute left here in the third quarter with your son trailing 7-10 to 10 to the Broncos, and the Broncos are on their own 16-yard line. First and 10. Don aren't set on the ball yet. Broncos could have run a quick play there and gained some three yards. Vancouver hands it off. He's moved up about four yards up the field. Tough run for three, four yards. Didn't. I think that's Sam Hill in the backfield. Is that Sam Hill on that one? Yeah. Clock still ticking here with 24 seconds left on the clock. Sun looked a little more sec set. Second and six. Broncos leading. Pistol formation. He comes up, moves up the block. He's going to pass, looking down to his left, down to his left, scrambling. He gets hammered in the backfield. He's going to get sacked by Ryan Markhart. He has a dance for everyone. <laughs> Okanagan sure Sun can. defense. I don't remember what that dance is called, but it's... No, yeah, flossing or something? Flossing, I yeah. believe. That was a flossing dance. So it takes it all the way back to the very original line of scrimmage back at the 16-yard line. So it's third and 10, and their kicker, their punter, is standing on his own goal line. Nice to see the Sun defense starting to have some fun in this game. But got to keep in mind, this is the winless Kamloops team that is ahead 10-7 at the end of this third quarter, going into the fourth. So zero time on the clock. They've got to get this play away to end the quarter, and he's standing on his own goal line. I seem to remember uh, seeing something like this happen not that many games ago, and it was almost blocked again. Javen Cakley picks it up at the 50. He's at the 45, across to the 43-yard line of the Kamloops Broncos. So that's the end of this quarter, trailing. Ten to seven. No, which, let's take a minute. The BC wine industry is all about people. People crafting products with passion. Save on Foods is proud to support our local wine industry by carrying the world's largest selection of BC EQA wine from producers all across our province. That's over 1,200 labels from more than 160 vineyards. Plus, there are new ones added all the time. Wines of British Columbia at select Save on Foods locations. For special offers in store and online, visit saveonfoods.com slash wine. This is Okanagan Sun Football. 
Hear it, live it on EM 1150. In the fourth quarter with your Okanagan Suns trailing 10 to 7, but they're threatening. They're on the Broncos 43. Got Colton Curry in the backfield. The formation, three receivers on the strong side. They're in motion, and it's a handoff to Curry. No, it's not. It's a fake, and it is bobbled. It's batted down. It looks like one of the O line. On the Okanagan. Grabbing the beginning of the line. But I, then he brings a play by him to make sure that Kamloops doesn't catch it because there's at least one or two D linemen there get them getting their hands on that, trying to reel it in. Here we go. There's no flag, yeah. So no flag in the play. Ball was tipped, and they're going to gain about two yards on that. So it'll be a second and eight for your son at the 41-yard line of the Kamloops Broncos. They're set up on the left side hash mark. It's a pistol formation with Colton Curry in the backfield. Receivers are in motion. He's looking downfield. Again, oh, Evelyn Gakey. Swat by him and corner and halfback on that Broncos defense. So the punting unit coming out, which is a lot like the play sticking unit, but I don't believe that he's going to try a kick, a field goal attempt from here. So instead, he's standing in the midfield strike, Isaac Wagner, the son's Isaac Wagner, standing in the midfield strike. Mm -hmm. right at the edge of his distance. Oh. It's a really short snap, and it is kick left five his knee. No, he's going to try. So, Broncos are lucky they didn't come the field, and that ball was and they didn't move to the ground. So, Dunn get the uh, one point anyway from uh, Isaac Wagner. I think he's their leading scorer. That, that is true, but they've been doing that most of this game and been able to hold the sun off the board. So not sure how uncomfortable I'd be in my own goalpost either at this point. Thank you. Is it off? Yeah. Trent Bryce with that one. He gets five yard gain, second and five. Broncos O line and thinking about getting up or taking a knee. It looks like he's going to stay down. Not getting in. 55. So here we are at the Apple Bowl. Eight. Eight. Bronco. Field for the Cavaliers Broncos. The Broncos are a second 40 yard line. They move the ball, but they can't seem to get any points on the board, which has been uh, just frustrating to watch. Uh, marching the chains well. Mm -hmm. 
Corey Allen's been quite been moving as well as the Sun have. They've been able to, when they've been had the opportunity. He's up for a first down. Leaving a string of bodies behind him, too. Andrew McCormick. Eight with 13, just over the in the game. Wrong side. It's a handoff against McCormick. McCormick makes about four yards on that one, just dives up the middle. I think he just stayed low and went underneath everybody. Yeah, that's going to mark him three yards here. Not going to get on that bounce. Second and seven. They're just trying to hold anyone. Got to stop them soon. We're starting to, uh, they can't, can't keep moving, letting them move a little bit up the field at a time. They got to get that field position, win that battle. Starting. Okay. Any of the point with the Sun defense. And he's blocked. There's the quarterback who gets the ball away, and Trey Adams is comes flying over. High points that ball, make sure no foot doesn't touch anyone else's hands and gets out of bounds. I think you made a really good point earlier. Van Kuga, the quarterback for Broncos, has got to get that ball out of bounds a little bit better because it almost got intercepted by your son. Yeah, a lot of his scrambles look like he's just trying to throw the ball away. He needs to get it, make sure it's actually out of bounds, not not uh, somewhere a son player can catch it. Saving her back to go. He doesn't go anywhere, but the 32-yard line is where that he's We'll kick there. So just start going east west until he can find a theme when there's uh, nothing north south for him. I think he was happy not to lose yards on that one. I mean, we've seen a couple where they've lost, they've started heading backwards, and it hasn't been all that effective. So your son trailing 10 to 8 here with just over 12 minutes left to go here in the game, the fourth quarter, and they're taking over the ball on their own 33. Really need to drive the field and at least get back in the field goal range to at least attempt another field goal here today. Three receivers line up on the uh, left-hand side. Melton Miller in the backfield. Pistol formation. Lots of motion going on. He looks and he passes out. Just a little screen pass out to the side. Miller is back to the original line of scrimmage yet. Looks like he's going to lose about two or three yards. Great defensive coverage there. Just enveloping Miller. Looks like they're going to uh, lose about one yard on that one. Two yards they're making it, yep. So the Sun have the ball. It's going to be second and 12 from their own 31. Well, can't be in these situations losing late the game. Mailer in the pistol formation. Malcolm Miller in the backfield. He comes up the block. Mailer's back to pass. He throws it down the left side of the field. It looks like there could have been pass interference, but no on Javelin Kakely. Kakely's protesting, but to no avail. It's two and out again for the Sun offense. I think that's a good no call there. Coverage is just blanketed on Kakely, who just can't get a good clean release on that. He's on the receiver to get a release off that DB, not on the DB to give it to him. So the Sun are losing the battle of field position here, and uh, with Let's see if Isaac Wagner by bad snap gets it away, but it's gonna get yep. Yeah. Oh, play right there by Brandon Ripko. All those didn't even try to get a five back. yard. Everyone else tried to get five yards and he didn't even slow down before going and tackling the man pretty much as he picks the ball up. So in the battle of the field position they just won, they're at uh they're at their own forty six and it looks like they're gonna gain at least five yards. Let's see what they call. The way this used to work is that could be a 15, I think. It could be. Just five yards. So from their own 51-yard line, and they're leading this game 10-8 to 8 over your Okanagan Sun. The Sun have got to figure things out here. they got to get some points on the board. 
Definitely. There's only 10 minutes left. Yeah. Camel win of the year. And the uh, Sun are going to be starting to look at losing home field advantage in the playoffs. He's back to pass. He takes the handoff and he screen passes out to the side as he's going down hard. He goes down and the pass is incomplete on the sidelines. They're second and 10 from their own 51 yard line. It was good just to get rid of the ball over there to the sidelines over near Trent Price. Number 25 running back. He's had an all right day when he's called on. No one in the backfield right now. He's got three receivers lined up on his left hand side. Running back going to join late. Here he comes in. He's running back's coming in. Takes the handoff. He's blocking for him. He airs it out on the left hand side. And uh, number 84 is the only one even nearby. To bring a third down. Back again. Quick on defense. Great work. And it's twice for penalties, but hopefully can block him. And who's our uh, is that Jamie Yep. The lone returner back. Snap is good and no block. Cakeley's on his own 28. He's got it. He's crossed the 30, crossed the 35, crossed the 40. He's got a little open field, 45. He's up to the 47 yard line by Javon Cakeley. He actually ran into one of his own players as well. Taking a no flag. But a great weave there by Cakeley. His feet coming out the other end of that hole, bouncing his way through it. Avid Okanagan Sun listener. I, I don't know that these guys are Sun fans until I'm on the broadcast, and then they find out that I'm doing that, and they let me know how much they love their Okanagan Sun. Again, it's pistol formation. Fakes the handoff down the left-hand side. Can't quite connect. Sila was the intended receiver, but he throws it out of bounds. He was being corralled. I think that might have been as much a saving grace as anything. Yeah, I'm not sure there. Um... Not sure there if Zyla's just, at least from where I'm sitting, it looked to me like Zyla could have put a little bit more effort towards trying to go and reel that pass in. It would have been a tough play for him, but gearing down the way he did. I don't like seeing that with these receivers. It's only nine minutes left to go. Down by two. Second 10. Pistol formation. Miller in the backfield. Miller's up to block. It's going to be a pass. He's down the left-hand side. He's got it. Zyla. That's the ball just short, <laughs> just short of the first down oh. on an eight-yard gain. Need a little bit more awareness there. So you have that on the right side of the stick. You gotta have Son that linebacker having a little bit of a conversation with a referee mediating. So it's gonna be a second and two for your Okanagan Sun. Third and trailing two. this game ten to eight with nine oh six remaining in here in the fourth quarter. We're third and two, and they're gonna punt it away here. Keith Wagner, sorry, oh. Isaac Wagner kicks it. It was a, uh, he was not ready for that. No. Uh, and it's caught. No yards has not been called, which is nice. The, the long snapper. Line. Long snapper was trying to catch the Broncos with too many men on the field, and he really should have. And again, the Broncos get away with one. This is a little bit of uh, extracurriculars after this last play. There's a lot of chirping going on in the field, and the guys are not clearing off quite as quickly. But I think a cooler heads will prevail. Yeah, somebody, somebody got judo thrown by somebody else right at the end of that play. It was hard to tell who was throwing who as both players hit the ground. But it did not make either side very happy. In the fourth quarter, in the eight, and they take over from that. is wag and more happens here he's going back to pass the broncos and they're corralling him he just whipped that ball out of bounds he knew he was going to get hit and he was avoiding it so van Kuchnitz figures this thing out real quick he knows he's about to go down yeah just getting rid of the ball quickly um incomplete pass 
second and ten. Really should Talk help this time. Out. And uh, this, the field positioning is uh, moving the sun's direction a little bit here, but the defense have to come up with another big hole. Second and ten on their own 28-yard line, 27, 28-yard line. Vancouver, nobody in the backfield. Back to pass. Oh, my goodness. He is getting hammered about 10 yards back. He gets hammered from the blind side. Is that Tyler going? It was Tyler going. Coming off the edge and a blitz was getting there in a real, real hurry. He didn't even get slowed down. So that's all the way back to the 20-yard line. Great play there by the Sun defense. Winning a little bit more field position there. Fits on a great kick. Position right away. Sunday only going to need a first down or two. David Cakley standing in his own 46. I think he's being really generous on that one. And on the five yard line, you've got Landon Monk. Hunter standing. They're in Kamloops the territory at their 47-yard line. So your Okanagan Sun with 7:14 remaining here in the fourth quarter, 10 to 8 from the Broncos 47. Yeah, we're only uh, we're only one first down away from being right at field goal range. So the Sun offense really. Hopefully we can find a quarter. Game by with size so hard. Two fields today. It's a handoff right up the middle. He's got at least five. He's up seven, eight yards, maybe nine yards. It looks like. Great run there by uh, Kelton Curry, I believe. Kelton Curry for sure took that one, and it's they're marking it down one yard short of the first down. That's that's what the Sun need to be doing on those first downs, getting some big runs. Yeah. Second and real short. Let's see if they keep it on the ground again to try to just punch in a first down here. I Curry in the backfield again. Pistol formation, three receivers on the strong side. It's on the right side hash. Hand it off for this. Oh, no. He looks like he's got about a, a yard loss on that one. And this would be a season long for Isaac Wagner if they went for the field goal here. This would be about a 45 yarder. They have marked the ball on the they say third and one. Yard. I think they're going to give it to him to go for the um, it's a quarterback one. sneak here. Watch for that. He's going under center this time. I watched quarterback sneak. Matt Old defense Miller comes and joins him. He takes the ball, and he's definitely got the first down. Got a Camus player calling no good, but. It is, official calling the, official, is good. the officials are the only ones that matter, and they're signaling first down. Move those chains. So the it's sun, exciting here. The Sun are finally moving the ball. Done right in the cusp of field goal range on a good day for Isaac Wagner. Down by two, five minutes to go. Really need to just push as many yards as they can forward and hope that Wagner can actually lace one through the ends of the right here. Curry in the backfield this time. Snaps back. Curry up the middle. Gains about five yards, maybe six. Oh, well, the goes. Sun can't afford any penalties here. There's a little bit of pushing and shoving after the whistle. It's at the 30-yard line. 31-yard line is where they mark it, so it's a second and five for your Okanagan Sun trailing 10 to 8 with 4.53 left on the clock here in the fourth quarter. You can feel them. Uh, you oh. can feel the Sun. They think it just seemed like they've got a little more purpose, a little more spring in their step. Curry in the backfield again. A little bit more urgency now with 4:38 left. Just the formation receivers are in motion now. Curry handoff right up the middle, and he's going. He's a guy. The first down. He's crossed 20. He's down. Great hard Third line there. Third line. That was a helmet. That was a helmet. As he could into the safety once he found a lane to that secondary and Okanagan are now well within field goal range. Still just going to run the ball all the way down to the goal line before they decide to kick it. 
Again, Curry in the backfield. Everyone's in motion. Curry's handoff right up the middle, off to the right a little bit. He's gained five. He's gained six, seven, maybe eight yards. This is what we need to see from the front offense all day. This is the best drive of their day, and they have just decided to run run it down to this goal line. We're second and two from the 11. 3.37 left, 10 to 8 for Kamloop. Big play is coming. Curry in the backfield one more time. Pistol formation. Receivers are in motion. In back, Curry handed the ball, and he gets knocked down before he gets to back to the line of scrimmage. What it's a- going to be a third down. And now it's moved backwards, back third and four. Huge, it's huge play there. Four. Number 94, uh, Mixon Madlin, the linebacker for Kamloops, came through the hole. Great tackle in the back. This field goal, and Wagner's been anything but clue. certain to be. Kamloops, yeah. deal. Got the ball marker at the 19. With 2.49 left on the clock and your son trailing 10 to 8. Ball form and snap is good. Uh-huh. 11, to, 11 to 10 for your Okanagan son against these Kamloops Broncos. The Broncos have been tough, but your son finally pushed. Oh, that's it. Break while we come back here to watch the end of this game. Bronag Contracting gives back to our community. For the past nine years, they've been a proud corporate sponsor of the Okanagan Sun. They're also proud to support the Okanagan Charity Classic Golf Tournament with proceeds to the Canucks Autism Network for Kids, as well as helping underprivileged kids play organized sports. Bronag specializes in commercial construction as a general contractor and project manager. If you need their expertise, get in touch. Bronag Contracting, a proud supporter of the Okanagan Sun. You're listening to Okanagan Sun Football Keep counting on me. AM 11. Oh, I can hear it now. The Broncos have the ball on their own 35. And back to pass. Instead, he fakes the hands off. Number 25, he gets about a five-yard gain on it. Your Okanagan Sun have just taken the lead with an Isaac Wagner 19-yard field goal to go up 11-10, 2-31 left in the fourth quarter. Great run there by Trent Price to get himself five, six yards to these Broncos on first down. Second and five. Got quite a ways to go to get in the field goal range, but they're only down by one. They could punt it for one to tie it. The clock is ticking, and uh, then Kuknitz got a, a pistol formation. He's back. He hands it off. He's got a five-yard run, and he's crossed the line. Uh, it looks like he's got a first down. They're moving the chain. Trent Price runs beautifully up the middle. Just that little... Gate hesitation move he pulls as he just kind of glides down the field for a good four or five yards every time he touches the ball. The Broncos are on the right side hash mark, trailing this game 11-10 with just over two minutes left in the fourth quarter. It's a pistol formation. Again, a handoff right up the middle, and he gains about four yards. they got to know it's coming every time, and it's Trent Price every time. Yeah, Trent Price again just tries to muscle his way for another five, only gets maybe three four out of it, but again, just try that. And with Zoline just pressing up field and running back, finding a good uh, good momentum. Second and six here for the Broncos as they're on their own 50. Everyone's in motion. He's looking to his left. He looks to his right. He's in deep in his pocket. Cordic is brought down back at the scrimmage line. He gets, yeah, tackled right at the line of scrimmage. This is going to be third and five. 142 third, third left. And six. Third and six with 142 on the clock, and your son leading 11 to 10. It's getting exciting here. Good crowd here today. Even though the weather is not great and it's Thanksgiving weekend, there's probably close to 1,000 people. Broncos taking the gamble. Third down and six. They got no choice. And he's going back. It's a handoff, and he's oh. up right up the middle. He gets that right of the line lost the ball turned, too. He drops the ball, turnover on downs, even if he didn't lose the ball. It's a turnover and downs. Your son 
to have the ball on the Broncos 50, and they're leading this game 11 to 10, 123 on the clock. Oh, this is going to be a heartbreaker not, for Cam Loop. I'm not sure that was a good play on Cam Loop. I mean, you know, there's a fair bit of time. they got a couple timeouts left. I was expecting them to do that little fake handoff throw to the slant. It's been working so well for them today. And I'm really surprised they didn't go to that or at least try for it. Their passing offense has been quite successful most of the day and needing six whole yards, uh, dangerous run choice. Matthew Miller in a uh, the quarterback today. Scrambles out to the right, hands it off to Miller. Nope, that's uh, David Case. No, nope. oh, that is Miller. Oh, early. No, it is. It is Miller. Out the sidelines. Gets out of bounds. About a five-yard gain. Second and five. Go on the left side. Hash marks on the field. Matthew Miller getting some uh, last-second instructions from the offensive coach. Again, Miller in the backfield this time. Minute and Miller and Miller and Miller up the middle. Pistol formation. There's the motion and the handoff. Oh. Get stopped in the backfield. Probably a two yard loss on that one. Hit hard right away. Malcolm Miller's a smaller guy to be playing running back, and you kind of see why on that hit. So it's going to be third and eight. Dunn going to be kicking it away with a minute and 13 left. Not a bad position when you, if Wagner can get a good clean one away. Let's see who the returner. There is no returner right now. There's short players on the field. There's probably way too many guys. There's one guy, Matt, Michael Bear, grinding back as fast as he can. And now it Jones looks like he's it, trying to call a timeout, but I'm not sure if they have any timeouts left. They're just. Now we got a. Official is standing on the ball to let them do this stuff, though, so I think they are calling a timeout. They signal timeout against the Broncos. Let them organize this punt return. That's a terrible thing to have to burn here, too, with only a minute left and not needing to not needing to have burned that timeout to stop the clock. Ian Finstad now is your returner back down there. Let's see if we see a normal Wagner punt, which should put us down near the goal line. It's a good snap. Gets it away. Beautiful kick towards the sideline at the 15, and it bounces out around the 15-yard line. No return on that one. Minute six left on the clock here. They mark it at the 17-yard line. Sun defense just have to stand tall for another minute and six seconds. They've done a great job since the first quarter. So if they can avoid those penalties, stand tall here. It'll be uh, slow them down. Yeah, so they're starting from a very big deficit. They haven't really been able to put string together eight plays together. So you got to think Sun defense has been doing a pretty good job of holding them. All those ten points came in the first half as well. Yeah, they've done nothing in the second half. So the de defense has done a good job. So he's in a shotgun formation. No one back. The ball is snapped into the dirt. He flips it over. Oh, and the ball is popped loose. He's picking the sun and picks up. They're in the 10. They're in the 5. Touchdown! Okanagan Sun. Connor Richard. Connor Richard picks it up and runs it into the end zone. Wow. And there's that big play the Sun defense have been waiting all day to make. That's the, the most of the game, I was kind of thinking that might be the thing that keeps the Sun from winning this football game is no big. No big play by the defense turns into points immediately. And there's the big play by the defense that turns into points immediately. So, Sun, with uh, 57 seconds left, put this game close to away, about to go up by eight. So now, now Cam Luke has to actually get a touchdown, touchdown and a two point to tie this game instead of just uh, the one point on a punt through the end zone. So, odds in the Sun's favor just got a lot better. Still just a play away from the game, though. So the intended receiver, or the receiver, catches the ball, gets hammered, hit, and it pops out of his arms, and Connor Richard picks it up and scampers about 25 yards into the end zone. Yeah. Great screen play. They get a pretty smart call and everything. Just the Sun player found it, punted the receiver who didn't see him coming, and just punched that ball loose as he tried to tuck it away. And you know what? It's really this team, these Broncos, uh, are a way better team than their record says, and oh. for them 
there for them. They got to be disappointed, you know, having such a great game. They played about 45 minutes of really good football. Well, they had the lead for most of the, most of this game. They had the lead until the last three, four minutes of this game, and just couldn't find a way to close it out and get that first W against a really, really strong Sun team. But it does bode really well for next season, especially compared their first game to this game. They've improved a lot over this year. Yeah, their coach, their coach said he has 22 kids on out of 45 that are 18 years of age. Oh wow! So that just tells you how many how many young talented players he's got that are going to be coming back next year. Yeah, if they can stick together till they're all 20, 21, 22, that Kamloops team's going to be strong. And Isaac Wagner kicking off from his own 45 after that touchdown. It's picked up on the 15 yard line. He's at the 20, 25. He's almost at the 30. He's brought down about the 31 yard line. Your Okanagan Sun are leading. 18 to 10 with 51 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Let's go back for a very quick commercial break. Maxim Auto Body understands that you really don't want to see them because, well, it means your vehicle has been in an accident. Let them make things better for you with superior workmanship and efficient service. Maxim does ICBC claims, collision repairs, and custom paint. Estimates are free and courtesy cars available. Maxim Auto Body, making friends by accident. Maxim Auto Body on Railway Avenue, a proud supporter of the Okanagan Sun. Online, MaximAutoBody.com. It starts here. This is Okanagan Sun Football on AM 1150. Came in on the wing. He came running in on the wing. Back here at the Apple Bowl with your Okanagan Sun leading 18 to 10 over the 0 and 8 Kamloops Broncos. We just had an offside, offside by your son, so they're going to uh, replay that down. It's a first and 10 for the Broncos on their own 31 yard line. Sorry, they've moved it up to five-yard penalty. Now it's the 46, 36. It'll be first and five. Vancouver in the I formation, the quarterback. He looks back past. He's flushed out of his pocket. He's scrambling down the field. Tosses up down the left-hand side. Almost caught. Oh, oh my goodness. Almost caught. Duneveld. Duneveld has his hands on it with three Okanagan Sun around him, and he cannot pull it in. And he's and he's the man at the top of the bunch, too. So if he pulls that in, it gets over. That means it got over everyone else's hands. They're all falling and turning to chase. And there's a, there's a chance that's a touchdown pass right there that just doesn't quite connect. It would have been good if he could have gotten extra two or three yards out of it to help Dunveld out a bit. But that ball is right there where it needs to be. Second and five, he's got split backs on it. Shotgun, he's back to pass. And it's very quick pass right up the middle. Hammers. It's about a 15-yard pass. He gets the first down. That's uh, Nicholas Cross, number 11, just coming up hard over the middle. 38 seconds left. This done defense still, still a little too jacked up, I think, for uh, for comfort considering I had, we are up by eight now instead of down by one. But that was Matt Wright taking the big hit there, and a the ball snapped into the dirt again. The quarterback scrambling. And Stephen Pelly hammers the quarterback back at his own 35-yard line, knocks him back 10 yards. Damon Pelly, what a happy guy he is. Just crushes. Biggest man on the field just crushes Van Kugnet. Reed Van Kugnet coming off. It looks like the punting team's coming out there. He's not calling timeout. They call He's coming time. to talk to the coach. Talking about Damon Pelly, yeah, he's a huge, huge human. He's in the 6566 six, six neighborhood and somewhere around 350. And even among the old linemen who are all pushing the 280 to 300 and something range, even among those two guys, he is a large standout person. But you know what? It's amazing how quick he is on his feet. Considering his size, oh, he is he moves shockingly athletic and just like looks comfortable. He's, he's, he's light on his feet at 300 plus pounds, which is an absurd statement to sort of even have to say out loud. <laughs> I feel like I'm just speaking oxymoronic nonsense. Yeah, I mean, he is an athlete. There's no doubt about it. So with uh, 28 seconds left on the clock here in the fourth quarter, your son looks like they're going to be heading into first place overall. Jumping out in front by that one tie over top of the uh, Rams and the Huskers. Having who are both at six and three. Your son will go to six, two, and a one if they can hold on for another 28 seconds. 
expecting in 17, somewhere in there? It, yeah, it looks about 17 or 18. Be interesting to see what happens here. Oh. Trent Price in the backfield. He's back to pass. He's scrambled in his pocket. He's down at his own 15 yard line. He airs it up, just tosses it up there. And I can't believe that wasn't pass interference. Adams is all over the intended receiver, Andrew Pekornik. Uh, and I, I can't believe it was so Yeah, pretty interference. fortunate there, I think. You know, he had, he had double, he was double coverage, and somehow uh, Pekornik still managed to get a hand on the ball. And uh, wow, their quarterback, Vancouver, was just scrambling about 20 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, just running for his life there for a second after. Uh, Okanagan pass rush came three, came free, sorry. Exactly. Number uh, 23, Corey McCoy, especially getting in there hot and eating that stiff arm before the ball gets thrown. 19 away. seconds left here on the clock. 18 10, Okanagan done. Third and 18, and Dakota's back. He's scrambling again, deep in his own, and he's going to run the clock right out. And he's airing it out down the field, and it's out of bounds. 12 seconds remaining on the clock. And the Okanagan's done now are going to just kneel this game out and escape with a win, which is not something I thought I was going to say here when I woke up today coming to do a no, Kamloops I, game. I thought the Sun were going to be scoring up in the 40 points. Instead, they've only got 18 points on the board. Matthew Mailer, is this his uh, this is second game in a row, third game in a row for Mailer back without Jacob Lout in the lineup? I think this is... I think it's his third. Third game, Lout has been out. Uh, Lopes is really, it shouldn't be how many games he's missed. It should be how many games he's even played in this year after getting injured in game two. He came back for three games and hasn't been back again. And it looks like Matthew Miller in there takes the knee real quick. Ten seconds left on the clock, and it's going to run right down. 18-10. Sort of too bad for Kamloops, too, that they couldn't. Had quite a bit of success in that first quarter, moving the ball on the ground, running the ball. And I think that was the main thing that allowed them to put points on the board early and get that 10 nothing, 10, 10 point lead early on. The sun just chipped away at it as the game went on. And then finally, finally put away with that defensive touchdown to end it. Yeah, and here we are. And that's the end of the football game. Your Okanagan Suns take over first place with a 6 2 and 1 record by defeating the Kamloops Broncos 18 to 10. Let's go for a quick commercial break, and then we'll be back for the recap. When you have Big Steel Box, moving and storage are almost too easy. From kickoff to the final play, they're on your team. They'll drop the Big Steel Box off at your place, then you pack it at your pace, and when you're ready...